Hope you guys are ready for this AT. This AT, so before this AT gets started, actually, uh, I guess that, that'll be the last song. I'm just going to meet the song request now. Uh, we're going to get some in-game music on now as well because I need to put this on YouTube. I don't want it to get just deleted off YouTube or just muted because it's very inconvenient. Um, so this tournament is actually super hype, guys. So this is actually a really, really exciting monthly automated tournament, in my opinion. Uh, we have on the EU, I would say the three main contenders are going to be Rank 55 Dragons. Uh, Lakers, it's going to be Lakers, not Worms, because it is actually with Draza, so it's going to be the roster for the, well, the team formerly known as Worms, will be now known as Lakers here, guys, uh, will be Azaz, Esprit, Goku, uh, Draza, and Frey, for that team there as well, rank 55 Dragons, which is going to be Dra, betraying the Lakers to play with 55, Boyce, Misha, Zan, and Sindrana, of course, for rank 55 Dragons, and then... Now, I've got to say this, guys. I'm a big fan of this team. It's Team Prestige. Okay, now, because, of course, 55 are going to play, um, you know, the Worms are going to play like a very team fight oriented comp. It'll be team fight three nodes, basically. They'll try and, you know, they'll have a lot of team fight. They'll also try and push that third node there as well, because that's the way the Worms like to play. Uh, 55, I actually, we actually don't know what comp they're going to play. It might be a double holo comp, right? Like, even with the Solbeast, with Boyce and Solbeast, because Boyce can multicast a lot. But... Either way, the Worms and 55 are going to play a similar style, right? It will be a fairly similar style um, to with those two teams. The third team, though, which is very spicy, is Prestige. Now, they're definitely a wild card, right? I think their comp is... It is a bit... It's hit and miss, particularly in a best of one, I think. Because if it goes wrong, it's going to go terribly. Um, but, guys, okay, it is actually a super strong team. It's going to be Pain, Aeon, uh, Benzo, I believe... Uh, and then, wait, who is it? So it's going to be Pain, Aeon, Benzo, Mio, and then who is the final player, actually, for Team Prestige? I actually do not know the finale. Uh, the final player, though, for Prestige. Oh, Rip, of course. Uh, pff, yeah. Obviously, the Mirage of Rip, yeah. So that is actually, that is a beast team, guys, to be fair. That's actually a beast team. And their comp can absolutely meme people, right? Like, that can 100% right? Annihilate people, particularly in the best of one. If they get a snowball, if they splat people, right? If they start getting those kills, 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 kills. If Aeon 1v9s on her druid, right? <laughs> if she's gonna play druid, I don't know what she's gonna play. Oh, are you, are you kidding me? Are you serious, guys? Right? First game, our poor hardstuck boys go into prestige? Oh, no! Oh, what a disaster. Melvin knocks, uh, uh, knocks Arnex. Sokos, Skelling, and Gigasith. Oh, no. Interpaid on the Thief here. Shadow Portal, because a giant map. With Rip here. Benzo on nades. Of course, uh, Benzo, guys, he's in both PG's pharmaceutical gang. Leader and prestige here. Uh, Mio, gonna be the Scourge here, kind of filling in for Vibran, what Vibran was doing last time here. Kind of a little bit of muscle on the team fight, a little bit of meat uh, for Team Prestige, just kind of holding down some nodes there. And just, you know, once again, almost acting as a, as a semi-support to an extent. And these first, and finally Aeon, gonna be playing the side noder role here on that, uh, kind of just a, the decap drone here. A nerf build, but still unaffected build, particularly if the enemy team does not know how to answer it. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. I probably won't watch this game that much because this is going to be... Um, it's going to be pretty brutal here. Like, this is... Uh, Prestige is definitely in my top three for this monthly AT. It's, this roster is actually super scary, right? Like, Benzo in particular. Like, Benzo is a player who has been activating hard, guys. Right? We've seen Benzo uh, 1v1 into Floody here. Very hard a while back. Actually even defeating him in the 1v1. Okay, uh, was Benzo. So, like, this is actually a very high-tier player here as well. Kind of filling in for Sage, but Sage Builder was playing for Prestige, of course, in the tournament, who's also a very, very skilled Holosmith player. But Benzo is certainly no slouch here as well, right? He's ready to activate. Although, dude, the team fight. The act this is what... No, if you're, if you're ever struggling in team fights, guys, just add more necros until you win. Uh, as you can see here, that the uh, the uh, the Hardstock boys are actually going to holding the team fight. They are slowly getting picked apart right now uh, by the red team. Red team looking to try and find this kill. Rip coming in there here for the cleave on the Mirage. Should be able to get that big damage that there is. That's going to be a lot of DPS there. And after he goes down, yeah, this is basically going to be the end of the game. Let's see what else have we got. We can take a look at the other games in the first round here. Let's take a look at um, Worms Scientist's Multiplication here. 
you know, Skateboard there, thanks for the 10-month uh, sub there. And Treya, thanks for the reason of Prime. And I believe also gifting a sub there to Poland. Thank you for the gifted sub there, Treya too. Three subs there, guys. Big content, big gamings. Very, very nice. Okay, your husband was also in AT with DPS staff guard. Um, who's coaching them? Well, look, they're little peepos, okay? Like, most of them haven't really, uh, most of them haven't really, uh, by the way, DPS staff guard is actually not even that bad. Uh, like, they, that, that was actually good in team fights, because a staff guard actually does a shit ton of damage, by the way. But, even outside of that, there are a lot of the guys in hard like, don't play PvP, right? They're very, very new, uh, to PvP, and, you know, the hard soak boys, and bear in mind, there's like a 464 member guild, right? There's a lot of little new frogs in there. So, what have we actually got here then, guys? We are gonna have, wait. Oh, wait, this is not actually Worms. I thought this was Worms, but this is actually a different Worm team. Is this actually a French gamer? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, hang on, dude. They're going for a different roleplay. Exiled Scientist. Guys, we have a full roleplay here from this red team here. We have Tenebrae on Scourge. Zartak, the original Worm. Now on the Scientist tag here. Zartak on wait, what is this? Is this decap scrapper? Oh my god. We have foreign signs. This is shorts because a player from NA quite famous for his uh, Mesma gameplay and quitting the game multiple times and also getting exposed by nudie. Now we have uh, wait, who even is this? Okay, kid signs. I actually don't know who this is. Um, I think it might be another player from NA. I've got no idea. Then finally, Plague Scientist here, Luana on another Scourge. So a pretty interesting comp. It's, it's honestly, um, it, it's not working, right, to be frank here, guys. It's not working at all here into the blue team. It's going to be Nox here, always Nox. Support guard, Faileth on the Deadeye. We have 40k HP. Oh, well, playing Kordakra, very appropriate. In fact, 50k HP, 28 plus 23 there. Timper on the uh, Burn Weaver here by looks. This is going to be a Burn Jewel Sweeper. Yep, Sage Weaver. And finally, Zealith. On the Scourge. It's going to be Sage Scourge here, I believe, as well. Yep, Sage with the Rune of the Dolyak. For just a little bit more damage, a bit more DPS output here on the Scourge. Instead of the Avatar Amulet that you'll occasionally see there as well. We've got a Hype Train going, guys. So as we go into the next game, I want to see subs, guys. Let's get some Hype Train content, guys. Subscribe now, my friends. Let's go. Now, where are the actual ones? Are they entered as Lakers? I think they might be. Or maybe they get a buy. They might have got a buy, actually. I don't actually see um, the Lakers right now. So, yeah, this, it looks like a red team is spec stack abusers here. Wait, actually, I don't even know which team is which here, right? I don't know what's going on there. Um, like, surely, wor yeah, worm signs multiplication. This must be the red team here. And then Riken left us two hours before must be the blue team. I don't know what's going on. Who the fuck knows? It's a bit confusing. But let's continue to move on. Ah, here we go. Yeah, there's, there's not entered as a team, okay? They are not entered as a team. So, here we actually have the worms. And here we go. This is going to be a spree. The big worm, worm's leader on the prot hollow hit. Frey, gonna be rocking out the scourge here. Azaz on his alt account on the Condi Herald. Draza on the thief and Goku on the support guardian. The reason why you're seeing alt accounts here, by the way, is guys, um, this is going to be Espreezal. Ilwin is um, Espreezal alt account. Tamari is um, is going to be Azaz alt account here. Okay, and then finally, Gok X is Goku's, because they already have this gizmo, right? Uh, we're still waiting for opponents still. Uh, monthly AT broken. Wait, is, wait, is 55 actually locked out of monthly AT? Um, I don't see you guys anywhere. Uh, let me actually try and have a look here. Uh, 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 wait, hang on. Probably uh, got... Bye. Okay. Dude, that would be really disappointing. Wait, are they actually... Do they actually get locked out of the AT? Do they get bugged out? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good, guys, okay? That's pretty bad. Uh, you hate to see that. Their queue didn't pop up. Ooh, wow. Are they actually bugged? That would be so bad, actually. Because that was that's going to be... Oh, it didn't show up. Uh, oh, dear. Okay, that is not good at all. We're going to maybe have to try and uh, keep an eye on that. But yet, yeah, it appears that there may be an issue with the monthly AT, potentially. Uh, I'll actually shoot a quick message to... CMC. Um, uh, right, I'm gonna see if we can uh, they, see if we can deal with that. Okay, let's check this out. Maybe team members weren't um, even to match them with anyone. Well, the thing is, they probably don't have a lot of QP. If anyone's gonna get, um, if anyone's gonna get a buy, it will be the team that has the highest QP. Uh, a lot of the 55 guys won't have a lot of qualifying points. Um, so that would, uh, yeah, yeah, so that wouldn't, that would be a little bit different, right? 
Hmm, we had the same bug a few days ago. They're out of the AT. Dude, that would be so disappointing, actually. Oh, well, I mean, if, the, if they are actually out, that's obviously very unfortunate. Like, very, very unfortunate. Um, but it does mean that, the, you know, we'll be seeing a big clash there, of course, between uh, Prestige and the Worms. You know, like that, um, it's pretty interesting. Check your connections if you can. Yeah. I'm on the case. Okay. Also, yeah, I've been, I don't know about you guys, but I've been, I've been having a lot of bugs, actually, in, in ATs recently. I've been, like, getting uh, stuck in them and not getting rewards sometimes, right? Like, ATs have been having a few issues, and a lot of people have been telling me and kind of reporting to me that there have been a lot of problems uh, with some of these daily ATs there as well. Very unfortunate that the monthly appears to be having a few difficulties. And it is possible, guys, I think it could definitely happen, um, that... It, it's just like, it will restart itself, right? It'll be able to recover here. Uh, it might be able to recover itself and get back into play here, but we'll have to see. And, oh, oh, hang on, actually. We've got a big team, actually. Yeah, I know that Ultram was playing, but uh, this is actually a very, very powerful roster here. We have Adelante, uh, Sh uh, Shuriken, aka okay, Shuriken here, on the support guard. Gornet on the Comedy Heralds. We have Sage Splitter, aka Jesus. Cabablanca on the Renegade. And then Fly on the Condi Thief right now, I believe, by the looks of this, so far here. So, a good amount of Ultram, kind of like the extended Ultranum roster here for the... Actually having a bit of trouble here right now into uh, into the red team here, actually, guys. We have Test Build in Ranked here on the Dragon Hunter. El Goddess, Nemesis on the Duelist Burn Weaver. We have Garkos. Dude, Garkos taking down Ultranum, guys. Spam this... Thumb for Ultra Num. Finland Winland. A very famous player, guys. Okay, a lot of you probably know him as Frozen Men. And then Coco. Wait, who even is this? Coco. Coco the Coca Croc. On uh, Hollow Smith of some kind there as well for the red team. Now, they are having a bit of trouble there. There's a stealth coming out there from Garkos trying to potentially res uh, this Hollow, but I think it's going to get it cleaved out there. In fact, Garkos now under threat here as well. He's got to find a way to wriggle away here. He is getting some good healing from just being in stealth, so he should be okay, but he has no cooldowns right now. He wants to try and break combat here. The Hollow going to try and hunt him down. I think Garkos might end up dying. He's got to try and port away here, I think. The Hollow actually doesn't see him by the looks of that, so he is actually okay, at least for the time being. Bell coming up in five seconds as well, and Garkos might actually have free reign to contest that right at the beginning. But actually, never mind. The Hollow is now completely aware of that. Garkos needs to get some health. It needs to get some healing here. Okay. Oh, uh, there you go. It looks like they got a buy. Uh, it, it looks like they got a buy, apparently, guys. So it, it does appear that the AT may well be intact. It did, did, didn't show up for whatever reason. Like, yeah, maybe the, any, the enemy team got kicked out or, like, the enemy team got memed for some reason or they just declined or whatever. Like, who knows? So, guys... Alarm bells, shut it down. 55 should still be in business. Ooh, that did, that went terribly there for poor old test building ranked. Got annihilated in one shot there. And that will be a bell here for the blue team. Will it be the second bell? Let's find out. It may well be, actually. It is. It's 50 points. And yeah, this game's almost certainly going to go in favor of the blue team right now. Like, winning that second bell is always going to be a very good sign for them here on this map. 50 points is very, very significant. And it sets you up for the kind of like the real game breaker, like the real back breaker. 75 point bell. It is an unbelievably powerful thing to you win that third bell there. It really, really is. Cab Blanca securing this node over here while the main team fight of Num is on mid. And with a Condi Rev and the Nade Hollow, this is going to be very, very hard to break through. Although, having said that, like, this is something that you see a lot with supports, particularly Core Guard. Like, Core Guard has such a hard time uh, surviving these days, right? The amount of DPS on it is actually crazy. Like, um,. It's such a squishy build now. Like, without uh, Mender's Amulet and with some of the healing kind of reduced on it, you really suffer, right? Like, um, you get trained down super hard and your cooldowns get burnt very, very quickly here on Support Guardian, uh, which is why you are starting to see other supports like Tempest and Warrior see a bit more play, simply because it is easier to survive on them. He's able to get away with it this time, though, but did take a lot of pressure in that fight. Finland Windland. Is he on Minion Monster, by the way, guys? Yes, he is, guys. Okay. And look, this guy is the OG Minion Monster, by the way, guys. Okay. This guy is the OG. G Minion Monster, right? Like, he's not any Minion Monster, guys. He was running it before it was even good, right? He would run this shit in ranked all day, all night. Frozen Men, Minion Monster, Necro. Now, he is going to fall here by the looks of this. Oh, no, he actually gets a really nice fear. Might be able to say this. He's going to get his heal score up there as well. 300 HP. Gets in Shroud, I think. He is going to be able to get away with this. Not dead just yet, but there you go. Carablanca finishes the job there. Third node is going to get decapped there by Coco. But is it really going to be enough here? I don't think so. Test building ranked. Getting Condi thiefed 
and is going to fall there. Fly secures that kill. Sage player will go back onto that node to contest that. Very, very nicely. What's Fly playing? Fly's on Connie right now, uh, by the looks of it. Uh, and this is, a, I think this is, it's something that Fly was actually, he definitely played this a lot in motor, right? Like a lot of um, thieves were, uh, play, they went up to DP, like power DP. But Fly, he's always been a big fan of the Connie Thief here, like the rotator, right? Moving around Connie Thief, killing things, annihilating things, and farming people, right? And that's what it's been there. And Fly is playing this, but even though it has actually fallen a little bit out of favor, I don't think you really see Connie Thief that much. Uh, but Fly is still representing it right now. Dude, the, he actually resolixes himself. But I don't think it's going to be good enough here. No, the poison is too strong there in the cleave out there from Cara Blanca. I don't think this is going to get revived here whatsoever. And this is going to be a win for Ultranum. Scuffed. Ultra scuffed is what I should say, I suppose, my friends. Ultra scuffed gaming are winning this. Good job, team, there. Oh, I think I want to kind of keep an eye on who's playing into who here, right? Because we want to have a look at Quaggans on duty, another team that could certainly be within the top four, I think. Carried by Pet and USA. Oh, wait. Ah, oh, hang on. Dude, how could I have forgotten this? I completely forgot to mention this team, guys. But another very spicy team could be the Azadome Academy. Also known, my friends, as the Azadome uh, School of Shooting. All right, slightly more inappropriate name, but that was their original one before... It got changed for somewhat obvious reasons. So we'll definitely be taking a look at that one as well. Because um, that is actually a very, very strong team there as well. Like, uh, you know, like Asdom, certainly a player uh, very well known uh, for abusing Deadeye. And putting in a lot of work there. With the Deadeye and kind of carrying the team there. And with a, uh, well, shall we say innovative strategy of uh, trolling the map with two Scourges. Very, very hard. Nearly dealing with Worms. Uh, in fact, like, you're very nearly breaking the worms in the finals of the last monthly AT. And, of course, um, in the tournament as well. So, we'll see if we'll see a repeat performance from them if they continue to play together. But I haven't actually heard much from them. I imagine we will see the same players there. But will they be on the same team? That's a very different thing entirely there. There you go. Blue team wins here as well. It's going to be Binster, uh, Haldun, Caspi. Okay, Momaz and, and Assassin. I don't really know who these gamers are. But they did a good job. And they won. There it is. They did it. Mises, Trash, Condi Man, Ketterman, right, in all caps with spaces there. Smoothie and Luna there. Getting it smushed in that game a little bit there as well. What is that name? Big Gaming? Yes. Big Gaming, huge gaming, big content. But yeah, we'll, hope, we'll, we'll, we'll check out, like, what's going on there with 55. Like, hopefully um, things have not gone weird. I think that would be a really big letdown. I think a lot of, well... A lot of you guys, and certainly me included in on this, like, are very excited to actually see Rank 55 kind of make their grand return. If there is an issue with this, I think that is very unfortunate. Um, I, don't, I, th I think they're okay. Right? I think we will actually see them continue on here. I think it's just they got a buy and it's, the UI didn't show for whatever reason correctly. And, and we're going to see that very soon. Dude, blue team just barely did a timer game here, actually. Like, red team with, like, the e e extra, like, big science. Not really paying off, unfortunately. Yeah, they can't win. I mean, they might as well AFK. There's not enough time for red to win anymore, unfortunately. There you go. Bell rung. And the worms scientists multiplication have lost this game into Riken left us two hours before. Incredible game in there, incredible content, incredible memes. What's Abindo doing these days? Abindo is attacking golems in Heart of the Mists. That is his pastime. That is his true passion in life, guys, okay? It is guarding the golems, hitting the golems, guarding them, and making sure no one else except him kills them. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, he might, re maybe he would return for a motor, right? Like if, uh, if Sind called upon him uh, to be their duelist for, my uh, ah, there we go, yeah. 55 are okay. They have now got a Q pop, I believe, uh, by the looks of that anyway. So we are good to go. We are good to go on that one. Let's see if this game is here, yeah. Colosseum it is. The Eternal Colosseum is being loaded into right now. Let's take a look at what we have here. So, ah, uh, oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, no, it is actually Maya. Okay, so here we go then. We actually have Nace, uh, Izzy, Spurs, Maya, and Badaka. Now, I've, they, I've seen them play this a few times. It's, it's a very similar style to the way some of the Asdom Academy team played. What they're going to do is they're going to hardcore troll with a Scourge on each node and then have the Guardian rotate and then try and rotate the DPS here because they have two damage. They have like this roaming party of the Hollow and the Thief. And they're just going to try and rotate between two nodes and win that. Now, this is not the best bat for that, uh, but honestly, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to keep up with this because the thing is, 
in a way, blue team, I feel, almost has, like, the ultimate counter to the red team's comp. They're just going to move extremely fast with massive DPS with a Mesmer, Thief, and a Holosmith. Portal even being used here by Rip as well for even more damage potential. I mean, Scourge is quite tanky, but it's not running Menders anymore, right? And it's just going to get destroyed, right? Like, these Scourges will not be able to hold versus the triple DPS comp. Uh, from the blue team here. It's going to be very, very hard. And meanwhile, they're going to get trolled by the druid here of Aeon. And of course, Mio doing that too. They're just going to immediately pull it out. And then, look at this. Look what they do here, guys. Immediately, Prestige is now hard outnumbering mid. And Spurs is going to be the target here. Like, Rip is homing in on that Guardian. Wants to tear through it. Pain will be coming in there very shortly as well. Now, Pain actually does get pressured pretty hard. And Spurs is doing a good job of not being dead so far. But how long is that going to last? Like, Mio going in crazy there as well. Pain trying to get a reason to get back into this fight. The Scourge, though, is holding, actually. Like, Red Team do a good job of holding this. If they can actually get to a situation where they stabilize these team fights and end up not dying to the massive damage of blue, then they're going to be in a good spot. But they have to be, you know, it's going to be difficult to do that. Pain actually almost dying here. If Pain does, wow, oh, wow. Oh my goodness me, Pain actually does die. That is a massive kill, because again, there's no support for the blue team, guys. Bear that in mind. Prestige does not run their support comp. And that means that when they, one of their players dies, that is it for them. However, they are still going to have to deal with trying to out-rotate all of this. And the thing is, I think they're going to struggle a lot. Red team is really going to struggle with holding their nodes. Because yes, Scourges can do that in a 1v1. But Scourge can't really do that in a 1v2 for any real measure amount of time. The second you're outnumbered on Scourge, you're going to have to kite instantaneously. And that is where the advantage uh, of blue team is really going to come in here. The advantage from blue is going to be when they just get in there and just slowly destabilize them by shoving players away. And you can see that is very much in the score right now. Like one cap there. Red team can never really push the line. And the, the thing about this is that red team is very much on a timer right now. They need to win. But they need to be winning very, very soon. Oh, look at that. Nice portal play there by Rip. Forcing Izzy just to come back there to deal with. Uh, actually, might be a decap. Not going to be quite a decap. And Rip might have a really tough time actually taking this 1v1 because he's very, very low on health. And he is on Mirage, so he can't get his health back. But that means no secondary Scourge to rotate over there to mid. Nace now getting chased down here by Benzo. And yeah, this is looking very, very good for Team Prestige because they actually find that kill. Like, Thieves are 1v1 in each other. Pain into Maya 1v1. Uh, might actually just find the decap. Of course, Payne is going to be playing defense here, trying to hold that node, which is going to give the edge to the uh, to, to her, in fact, because, of course, Payne will just be stealthing up, eventually getting decap there, no matter what, pretty much. But Prestige find the kills on Nace, Badaka, and Spurs. They get that mid node, and now they're going to push them up here as well. Like, positioning Mio onto the dragon will be able to hold that quite nicely. Rip going to go for the buff over here, and I think he should get that pretty much for free. Payne actually in a lot of trouble in this 1v1. Uh, Queen might actually might be able to find this kill. Oh, just barely. Payne wriggles away. Uh, but the 1v1 nearly secured there by the Red Thief, in fact. They're nearly getting that done. Very, very nice play there by the Red Thief of Queen Maya. Uh, there as well, you know. In fact, I think that could be like a, a heal skill difference there as well. Like Payne uh, going with... Uh, Payne having a Hide in Shadows means that he, his heal has a cast time, right? Which makes it much more vulnerable to steal and headshot, right? Whereas the heal skill from Queen Maya, uh, Withdraw, is, does not have a cast time, right? So you cannot interrupt that. So it's much easier... Uh, to restain the result. But yeah, very nice play there from mine nonetheless. Like, I think Pain 1v1 is no, uh, no laughing matter in any situation, guys, okay? It's never going to be easy to do that. And they actually find the kill on the Pain. It looks like they might get Aeon as well. Maya, should we have to find that? Oh, there we go. There's the backstab with the Heartseeker. Gets the kill onto Aeon. And Red Team doing a very good job, actually. Like, they, look, one thing we have to talk about, though, guys, is that they must start winning now. Red team needs to win quickly because they're going to have a very difficult time actually contesting all three nodes at the same time. So if they don't get ahead early on, they just won't have enough time to actually win the game. Now, they are actually trying to split three here a little bit. They have a Scourge on close and a Scourge on far. This might end up being very, very scary. Like, Izzy is going to be exposed here. However, Spurs respawns will be able to support the Red Scourge here. Izzy going to play very defensively, knowing the Thief's coming. So we're going to back off immediately. And try and get the hell out of there. Uh, but Red Team now needs to actually get this node neutral. Like ASAP. But they've got to get rid of the field. I think they want to be controlling mid and probably one of the side nodes as much as they can. They've got to keep these nodes neutral or better, right? Otherwise, they're just not going to win this game. And yeah, Aeon here. And this is where Druid is going to be a big problem here too. Like, where's the answer to the Druid for Red Team here? Like, they don't really have a, a proper side noder as such, right? They have these Scourges. 
but they don't really have a side noder. They don't have like a duelist class, and therefore they're always going to have to outnumber Aeon, which makes things very, very annoying for them. Because they, you don't want to outnumber the Druid, right? You don't want to be outnumbering, right? You want to be, um, you know, you know, holding these fights and actually taking even fights and winning the even fights. Because if you're outnumbering someone, that means you're outnumbered somewhere else on the map. And the blue team is going to have a much better time of doing that because they've just got a much more mobile, high DPS burst composition. Aeon getting ported out there. Very nice portal play there from Rip there as well. Getting that droid out of there. So she was, of course, dying in that unknown fight. But, of course, the portal is going to restabilize. Now, Red Team does get the cap off that. But is that really going to be enough here? I'm not sure. I think it's very, very difficult here, guys, uh, for the red team to win. Like I said, I just don't think that red team's comp is going to work super well. Like, the druid is a huge problem here. The rotation is a huge problem. There's just too much damage there. The scourges can't get kills. There's no real kill potential here uh, from red into these gamers. And this is looking very, very scary right now for the red team. Prestige just slowly, slowly winning. Like, red can hold on to one node, but they can't win on one node, guys. You need to be holding, okay, more, okay? More than one if you want to get back into this game or at least have a node advantage. But it's just so difficult for them, right? Like the droid is spamming decaps on them. The thief's moving around, plusing stuff like Izzy bleeding out. They're once again outnumbered on the map. Prestige looking very, very good here. They're almost certainly going to win this game. I don't really see a way for red team to lock this out because their win condition is they get like at the map on lockdown, right? They get a two cap and they just hold it, right? They just, they ignore the third node. They hold the two cap and just rotate here. They, they, they're, they're in their dream situation. Like no one dies, right? Like no one dies on either team. And they just force this lock map state. But it just isn't really working right now. Like, you know, you can see them grab one node there. But again, like, you're getting to the point now where even if they get a two cap, is it actually good enough to win the game? Honestly, not really. Um, they only have eight minutes left. They're 150 points behind. If they even get a two cap right now, that means they gain one point on their opponent every two seconds, right? And that is slow. Right? That is slow. So what needs to happen is red team needs to get a two cap and D cap. Right? Because if they can't do that, it will be extraordinarily difficult for them to actually get enough points to win the game. Right? And, and this is what I meant earlier on is the fact that red team needs to win quickly. Because if they don't win quickly, this happens. Like when you're when you're um 150 points behind in a game like this. Red team is pretty much forced to play three, right? They, at this point, they can't play two. Like, playing two doesn't work. So, their strategy is now broken, right? Like, blue team has essentially broken the strategy of red team. Like, prestige has made it so that red team can't do what they want to do anymore. If they do that, they'll lose anyway, pretty much. Because they'll get decapped a bit. They won't be able to hold the two cap the entire time, right? Meanwhile, the third node is completely uncontested in favor of prestige. And yeah, this game is this is essentially over, right? Like, as weird as it sounds, like, six minutes left. This game is over. Let's look at some other games. We might as well just look at 55. Well, yeah, as you can see here, guys, like, the 55 game is pretty, uh, pretty, uh, juicy in favor of the red team. Of course, we have Syndrome on the Thief, the DP Thief there, guys. Here he is, Shadow Arts, Trickery, and Daredevil. We have Misha, the Master of Disaster. Support Warrior, which is something we've seen him play, and I think may well be a popular choice, in fact, for a fair few teams. Uh, like, Support Warrior kind of fell out of favor when Guardian kind of came onto the... You know, when it, of course, it got nerfed a bit, and when Guardian kind of rocked up, came to the show here, but it is back thanks to its very high durability and, of course, rotational capacity, because it can be quite mobile uh, as well. Uh, as opposed to some of the other supports, which can be very, very slow to rotate there. But Warrior, as you can see, is having a good time wriggling away, kiting quite nicely with its defensive capacity of shield block and full counter. Dra on the Prot Hollow. He's uh, certainly well known for being a duelist. And here he is, once again, Zan. Here he is, Big Zananas on the Nade Hollow. And Boyce, okay, on the Renegade Roma here. We might see boys play a few different things, but looks like Renegade is going to be the build of choice for the time being for uh, the 55-player boys. We'll see how that one develops. Rom spectating, guys. Rom leaking to the worms. What's going on there? Okay, like giving them the intel, guys. Giving them that top secret, um, top secret strats. Let's see what other games we got going on here. What else? is happening right now. Oh, actually, Corgans on GT having a bit of trouble right now. Let's see, actually, rosters for these two teams. We actually have, uh, Nikki here. We have, ah, uh, Johnny, uh, <coughs> excuse me. 
Johnny Sinsrana, Dome. Okay. Wait, who is this guy? Gee, wait. L what? Lord of the Coombe. Right? That name isn't even good. Right? Lord of the Coombe? On the Pro Hollow. About to get taken out by a Mirage. Well, it's that. Gets power blocked to death. There we go. Test Mirage 2 from Ryan. And Cranox on the DH, in fact. Corgan's on duty, having a bit of trouble here. We have uh, Zinvu here on the Mirage, as usual. Demolish on the Scourge. Holy Beardman, support Guardian. Cranel on Thief. And, of course, Don't Be Toxic to Me, a.k.a. Benny, a pharmaceutical gang member. You see them everywhere, guys, here on Corgan's on duty. On the Com the Herald, going to be kind of functioning as the side node, a duelist. And, of course... Handy team fighter there as well for the Quaggas. They do get themselves a node, and they might be able to pick up two kills. Well. If they could find this Mirage, that would be amazing. Lord of the Coom goes down. Has now been fully eliminated. Two cap definitely needed here for Red Team to get back into this. And they do now find that. Let's see if they can continue to fight for this third node. Red Team is going to be a little bit outnumbered, though, as Blue now has completely respawned there. So also they are going to go for a two-node play here. Just like, play it safe, back it off, and try and win the next fight. Obviously, they've been having a bit of difficulty in this game. Let's see if they can stabilize it and see if they can win. Yeah, at the start, like, they were just not getting any kills. But now Quaggan's absolutely... You can see the momentum swap. Look, look at this here, guys. This line in the sand is where the momentum went completely in favor of the Quaggan's getting kill off the kill off the kill. No kills for a very long time right now for the blue team. So if the Corgans can keep that up, they're going to be in a fantastic spot. Crown are going to 1v1 into Ryan. Of course, this is going to be a little bit annoying here uh, for the Mirage to actually take that 1v1. Meanwhile, we actually have like a team fight getting set up here. Almost for the sword buff. Highly gets, but the Revenant will be able to grab that pretty easily. There we go. We have Niccolo grabbing that, and that's going to be pretty juicy. In fact, that Mirage looking like a very, very squishy target right now, in fact, um, for this Rev. Oh, wait, is, wait, is he, wait, what is this? Wait, what is this build, actually? He's playing Axe offhand and finds that kill immediately. So instead of going for Sword offhand, actually plays with the Axe, and that is going to be a kill there. Benny cannot revive that, and now we're going to have a uh, Cranel come in there for the plus, but will be matched immediately there by Dome and Ryan there. Meanwhile, mid was decap there in favor of blue. So this is looking very scary, actually. The Corgans might be about to lose that harder momentum. In fact, they are. Cranel goes down there. He's been taken out. Dome gets the decap almost instantly. And blue team just extending their lead out a little bit further. Holy beer, man. He's exposed right now. That is going to be a essential 1v3 onto that support guard. And he cannot hold that for long. He's doing it, but he's trying to survive this as much as he possibly can. But he gets yoinked there. He'll score into it. He's got nothing left. That's going to be a kill on the support. A kill there. The DPS is massive there for the blue team. Revenant very low from blue, but now it's going to be a 1v4 into Benny. Benny in trouble right now. Might be able to fall as well. He's going to go down. Oh, he gets his gun off, but that is not going to be enough. Not for long. Anyway, there's the kill. He might even get yoinked in here a little bit. No, falls off the kite spot there as well. That is going to be a very, very dead Condi Revenant almost immediately. Zenvo does get the full cap on far, but it's now a four. It's a two cap right now. Okay, a big, big two cap. Lord of the Coombe dies. But blue team, they were kind of near the point where they can just win on one. Uh, win on one runner. They've just got 90 points to go. They have a kill on the board there as well. On to Benny. If they win one more fight, then this game is completely over. Zimvu gets trapped right now. They're trying to wriggle away as much as he can, but he's honestly in a terrible spot. Look at his health. His health is gone already. This Mirage is getting chased down by a thief right now. He needs some support. Where's Holy Beardman? Holy Beardman is nearby. I might be able to somehow keep Zimvu alive, but he is just so low right now. Gets another dodge. He will be able to survive. He gets the stealth, and Zimvu does get a great kite. The Corgans are not out of this just yet. Lord of the Coombe, though. Oh, that's a big move there from Lord of the Coombe. Comes off respawn. Walks over here, guys. Starts cooming all over this point. Gets the line capped up for blue, and uh, that's not good at all. That means there's going to have to be a response here on Holy Beardman. Eliminated there by the Mirage. Just fell a little bit behind the Scourge and the Mirage, and that will be pretty much the end of the game. I think with the support dying here, Ryan going to stomp that out with a Mirage Cloak to get that dodge. Get that dodge will guarantee the stomp. Zimvu now, no hope of getting his health back with the Holy Beard Man. Fully dead right now. This is looking terrible for the Quaggans. If they lose one more player, then the game is one truly over. I think it's going to be Zimvu. Zimvu is going to fall there. That is going to be the end of that. Cranel. Demolish going to go for the revive there. Can't do it. Cranel also very, very low as well. Blue team here going to grab that second node. Cranox on the Dragon Hunter. Looking to kill Benny here. Ben Levy so, so low right now. Nicky going to try and take him out. There was some big DPS there on the Power Herald there. With a slightly novel build of the Axe instead of the uh, Sword Offhand that you typically see on your Power Revenant builds. There you go. There's the 2 cap, I believe. d -cap did come through from Crown, so it is still going to be one node. But... I think this is going to be pretty much the end of this 
470 points right now for Blue. A kill about to happen there onto the Condi Herald. The last man standing on this point for the red team. And that is the end of that. Five points is going to push it to 480. And the Corgans will fall in battle. They have met their end at the hands of... Wait, who even are these guys? Okay, what, what's their team name? I don't they even have a team name. They don't have a team name, but... They have still achieved victory here, and that is what we like to see, my friends. Okay, yeah, it's just, they're the cold foamers. The cold foamers have got the job done there. Now, the Valerians here as well, so there are still a few interesting teams. I think the next round, though, is where things might get a little bit frisky, guys. We might start to see Worms into rank 55. We might start to see Worms into Prestige as things continue there. So, we'll see how things go, guys. Then there it is, guys. Lord of the Coombe. Saying something there, a bit of a French situation there, guys, from Lord of the Coombe. As they are able to achieve victory into the Quaggans. There you go. Ooh, Wormhammer is going to be the um, is going to be the game. You know what? You know, Mice Crispy pointed out that this is Wormhammer because this is the worms like this. This is the map where the worms are big. But have you guys not realized it's so insanely appropriate because there are actual worms on this map? Have you guys thought about that? Right? Okay. Is it a coincidence that the map that has Actual worms is the French worms god map. Guys, I mean, take a look at these worms. Seriously. Look, they're right here. Look, that is basically, okay, when you're playing versus a spree, this is your perspective, guys, okay? Look at that. That's what you see, guys. Feels worm man, okay? Worm gaming, worms content. There it is. Very nice. So, we have, it's going to be the on the red team. Zinvu on Mirage. Demolish on the Scourge. Oh, oh, they're going to switch it up a little bit, actually. They're going to go for a double Scourge. Holy Beard Man also going to go ahead and play on the Scourge here. Cranel playing on the Thief once again. And then finally, Benny on the Condi Rev once again. And then, of course, on the Blue team, we have almost a similar style, actually. It's going to be double Scourge on both teams there with uh, Izzy and Badaka on the Scourge. Are they both Sage? I believe they're both Sage. Yeah, they're going to be both Sage Scourges here, which is kind of something that you see popping up a little bit more now, because like, uh, Mendes doesn't exist anymore, right? And I, is it double Sage here as well? Oh, oh, my God. Wait, Dimash is actually full pump. He's going to go full carry and actually for even more damage out. But, but of course, he is not going to have any healing. Or, well, rather, significantly less healing uh, than his normal. In fact, no, he has none. Because he's not even playing blood. He's just playing spite. Soul reaping spite and scourge for massive damage and corrupt potential. But, obviously, a lot less staying power than the other variant of scourge. However, it is going very, very well so far for the Corgans. They're successfully contesting this third node uh, with Benny getting in there. However, Benny does finally fall. Maya, honestly, popping off. Like, she is really putting in some work here in these games. You know, dealing, you know, trying to handle pain in their previous game versus Prestige. And now getting a very, very nice kill there onto Benny. Kind of maybe the beginning of changing the momentum of this game. It looks like it should be Demolish falling very, very soon here as well. Although, dude, look at the damage. Oh, my God. Seriously, this Scourge would actually just annihilate it. Will actually end up um, falling there as well as Maya gets in there with the, uh, the last second evasion there and finds that kill. But do you see all that torment there? It goes like so much corruption, so much DPS from that Scourge build. Oh, but darker downs like Nace s resing it. But the stomp comes out from Holy Beer, man. They get the job done and they should be able to control this fight continuously. Spurs in a bit of trouble. And honestly, like the, it, the Guardian... Maybe not getting as much value as that's you know as the extra damage that the uh, the Quaggans are actually running in this matchup. But let's see how this is going to go for them here. Now Zimvu going to immediately rotate away from this fight, going to try and draw all these games. Where of course in their massive fight, that's where the Guardian is going to generate value, and the Quaggans are therefore going to try and rotate to deny that as much as they possibly can. Maya looking for a decap, but demolish. Does he get here in time? I actually don't think he's going to quite make it. Actually, having said that, I think he is going to. Ooh, one tick, and he does make it. So he'll be able to resecure that node in favor of his team. Blue team going to grab themselves a node at last here on point A. So it really comes down to this next big conflict. But Spurs is down and that's that vulnerability of the gun. Oh, Crown getting knocked off. That is massive. Can they deny that revival? The blood world ticking away. They're going to go for the handers. I think they should be able to get that revival. Can they get it? I think they're going to get it. Oh, the CC is big. Oh my god, they do get it just barely. But Spurs, he is not having a very nice port there by Spurs. Beautiful play there from the Guardian, getting that disengaged. But he is not out of the woods yet by any stretch of the imagination. The red team want his guts. They want that guy and they want it dead. They want it down now. Cranel spamming that heart seeker, guys. His two key is going to fall off his keyboard by the time he's done it. And Zimbu now here as well for the duo there. But it does appear that Spurs has managed to weather the storm. The blue team has got away with this. Right? They've managed to hold on. And... 
That's the thing about running with no guarding, guys, particularly with that Mesmer and Thief. Look how that health bar just does not come back. And Benny falls again. Nace nades. Finds the kill. Hammer up now. Scourge v. Scourge action. Damage into Badaka. But I believe Badaka will actually um, probably lose here. Uh, so, sorry, uh, Damage will lose even if it was a 1v1 because there's no sustain for him. Badaka having that sustain will win. But that does not even come to pass because we already come in there. We have another plus there from the blue team knocking Damage away. And then immediately getting that hammer, neutralizing the map instantaneously. Zimbu though, ready to recap that node. Does get that maintain the lead here for the team. Benny also on point C. We'll be able to initiate his 1v1 into Badaka. Very, very slow 1v1. But look at these health bars. Like, the health bars are so, so low right now for the red team. Cranel is able to disengage there and will begin to resign. But holy beard, man. Almost certainly going to fall there. Yeah, Maya and Nace. That hit squad. The Hollow Thief hit squad. Generating that kill. No blood magic of any kind of funky revivals there from Dimash too. Dimash trying to duke out Nace. Doesn't succeed in doing so. Looks like he might be able to actually get that disengage and push into this fight. And if he's with the Conjurer, that can be very nice, guys. That can be very, very good content indeed. However, this game is super, super close around. Dimash coming in there to help Benny get rid of Badaka. But Nace and Spurs have arrived. And again, there's no real healing here for the red team guys. Like, bear this in mind, like the Corgans, they can't get their health back. Now, Nace does get caught in a pretty big Condi spike from Demolish uh, and Benny. But the Elixir S is going to get him wriggling away. Now, with Holy Beard coming into play, this might actually be a good fight for the Corgans, actually. Because the Guardian uh, can actually just get bullied super hard by the amount of damage here. Kondirev and Double Scourge, both of which do damage. That is honestly terrifying for a support Guardian. So the Corgans might even end up coming out ahead there as well. It looks like they can try and find a decap here on mid as well. They even get a kill onto Izzy. 1v2, Thief and Mirage onto a Scourge. That's super scary right now. So map state, even though they do lose node, this honestly might not be that bad right now um, for the Corgans because they do get that quick kill there onto Izzy. Zumbu stomping it out. And Oh, does he get a hit? He doesn't get the stomp out there. Oh, and they get the res. Wow, very nice res there from Nace. And Maya getting in there right at the right time. This fight being held very nicely too. But Badaka does fall. The Spurs have a revive. He already used the signature. So he can't do it again. Yeah. Like I said, guys. Like, there's just so much damage. Like, it's actually... It's so weird. But... Guardian, like the supports, are kind of almost not good in the big team fights right now, like the 3v3s, because they just don't do any damage, right? There's just no damage on the supports. There's no pressure. They can't peel themselves out, and so they just die, right? Like, you know, this is not enough DPS to rip through it. Uh, and you can see that reflected in that fight. There was just so much DPS coming out from Benny, uh, Holy Beerman, Dimash, that the support was just rendered useless pretty much. That, you know, that you can cleanse Condies, but you can't cleanse that many. Two Scourge versus two Scourge. I mean, look, guys, it's good content, guys. It really is. It is good content gaming. It really is. Okay, you've got to embrace the action. Embrace the action right now. Quaggan's still ahead right now by just 50 points. They're holding this quite nicely. Benny 1v1 here into Izzy here on the hammer. Here we go. Don't be toxic to me. Got a 1v1 into a Scourge over there. Meanwhile, both Scourges from Red Team converging on the point B. Badaka being shoved away. Oh, and he's actually 1v3. Now he's in a lot of trouble right now. Ports back onto the note to try and contest it as best as he can. Spurs arrives, though. Should be able to sustain Badaka quite nicely. Drake there with the Prime Gaming. I like you guys. Good job. Valerian still in? Yes, they are still in. Zimvu eliminated. This could be a bit of a turnaround moment here right now for the blue team. Can blue team get back into this? They're just getting a few kills, but they're not getting enough kills, I feel like. That's the thing. Like, you know, it's getting one kill is great, but you need more than that. You need to get, like, two kills or at least gain something off this. And I think that's where blue team's kind of having trouble right now. They're not getting a crazy amount of value out of winning here, right? They're getting a few kills here and there, but are they actually winning the map? Not really. Like, the Mesma Thief rotating quite nicely there. Maya ends up going down, however, Spurs would to res that. Oh, no! Gonna have to cancel the signal. Actually, actually, Port's there. Is that gonna get hand res? Oh, we actually might not get hand res there as well. Izzy getting very, very low. Cranel looking for another kill. Oh, no! Oh, that is a disaster. Looks like a res might come through, but no. Spurs get into it. And Spur... Oh, my goodness me. That is an absolute catastrophe for the blue team they're losing three players and hammer losing a fourth with badaka on mid that might be game over uh, oh no that is very very bad indeed guys very very bad nace left completely on his own uh, and actually he might get hunted down here as well he's completely alone on the map right now uh Dimash coming in for that uh vernick here uh, holy beard man lurking around on middle so that should be at least a two cap right now i believe 
uh, for the Quaggans. That is potentially game ending, actually. That is such a massive tempo swing um, in favor of the Quaggans. They might just be able to clean the game up just on that basis alone. Two cap in a game this slow is absolutely huge. I want to check on some other games with you guys. I want to see what's going on in the um, other games here. Uh, how uh, is the Ultram game going? What is going on in the Ultram game? Oh, it's also an equally close game. Oh my goodness me. Pain, Rip, Benzo, Mio, Aeon versus Adelante, Gornet, Sage Splitter, Carblanca, and Fly. Prestige is a little bit ahead right now. 200 to 190. Uh, health bar's looking pretty even here. Hammer being stalled out here by Aeon. So far, she is 1v2, though. And the damage is going to be very extreme as well. I don't think Aeon can actually hold this. I don't think Druid can get away with this. Not on Hammer. There's just simply too, not really enough space to move around here effectively. And Aeon's going to have to eventually give up the Hammer. Of course, Mio getting very, very little point there as well. But if Hammer does go off, that would, of course, uh, not only generate a kill in favor of Ultima, but also another one thanks to Mio dying here as well. Gornet finds that kill. Fly going to stomp that out. Is there any revive potential? There is no revive potential as well. Yeah, Aeon dies on the Hammer. So the map will be neutralized. Of course, Red Team won the map off the back of that, actually. Uh, they got point A and C. And they are are going to bring in Pain in terms of actually contest. However, I don't think Pain can hold into this Renegade. Like, eventually he will stealth up and eventually lose it. However, ooh, with Rip coming and things, that definitely changes things here a lot. But Adelante rotates in perfectly. A very nice rotation here from the support player of Ultra. But suddenly, he's the target. Oh, so look at that damage. Great line of warding, though. It's going to completely keep him safe with Cablanca. Fly gets burst as well. Dude, seriously, every time a new member from the blue team comes in, they just get turbo bursted by the red team. However, it does appear that the arrival of the support and the horsemen will actually prompt the rotations from Rip. They're going to try and move away elsewhere. Prestige going to leave the hammer here in this 1v1, having Mio 1v1 into Cabablanca. That is a pretty endless situation there. And oh, and hang on now with Pain coming in. Cabablanca once again under fire. I'm loving this map movement here, actually, from Prestige. They are really making Ultranum work for these points, making them work for the hammer. A very speedy rotation is required to actually play this out correctly. I need to fix my character model limit because this is very, very scripted. Adelante is going to be the one who ends up falling there as well. Like, just not quite enough speed there. And those back and forth movements there are going to get the better of Ultranum. At least for the time being. Cower Blanca probably going to die here as well. Heartseek is coming through. The Torn is very, very nice. The CC chain is good. Cower Blanca trying to heal as much as he can. He gets his heal off. And he might be at least safe for the time being. Gets the Chitin. That means there will be no ports onto him at least for the time being. But the Mirage actually is on him. He falls down there as well. I think this is going to be the end here for Cower Blanca. Can he somehow survive? Adelante respawns the edge. He gets the Chitin. He survives just barely. But Prestige. Point A and C. They've got that map back. Aeon ended up falling there, though, and that will mean that there is no side noder on board. However, having said that, um, you know, the side noder, uh, there's no real, there's not really a lot of side noding here either for Ultram, actually, like, because it's not a prot holo, it's a nade holo from Sage Splitter. You know, the Necromancer can actually 1v1 a little bit there, Shroud can help it survive, uh, but it's still not going to be like a full on Jaws. And actually, look at that instant decap there. Like, Glyph of the Tides, Entangle, Ancient Seeds, very annoying, particularly for Necromancer to deal with that. Like, Necromancer has a super tough time against stuff like that and immediately loses the node there. So the lead for Prestige is now starting to grow. Five minutes left on the clock. They do get a kill on Pain, very nice kill on Pain there. Point A held by Carblanca. Rip driven away. And Fly probably going to go for a decap here on point C. But I really like this rotation from Benzo. Dude, Benzo, he is aware, guys. He is aware as fuck. Immediately notices that there's going to be a decap on point C. Moves there. Denies it. And then that then immediately goes back into the team fight. As he sees the thief also pushing the fight. Now, of course, the team fight should be good for Numb here. Uh, they have the support. They've got the Necromancer. All that kind of good stuff there. Mio is not going to match all of that. All on his lonesome. But... That is why they dodge the teamfight. They stall the teamfight. They deny the cap there with the druid. And then simply move over to point A there. Rip goes over to that point A and grabs that quite nicely. Point A now being held down here by the Mirage and Benzo coming in to keep that contestant. I think this is really like the plan for uh, Prestige, particularly on a map like this. This is definitely not a good map for Prestige. Probably one of the worst maps for them, uh, to be frank, actually, because they just can't really out-rotate super well here because it's such a small map. But I think what they want to do is they just want to stall out the fights. They want to stall out the game as long as they possibly can and just pick up a kill here and there and slowly win. They slowly, slowly win over time. Fly signated? No, not quite actually. Atlanta going to get that hand res? Yeah, they are going to get that. Nice Elixir S res there as well from the stage. Very, very kind of balls of steel there to go for that. But Cablanca dies there to Pain and Aeon there. Gets immobilized and the Thief simply whops him to death. Rip, oh actually hang on. If there's a portal here, if um, Rip actually ports in there, he can potentially get that res. That's a very big res there from Benzo. Benzo gets that revival there. 
Beautiful revive there from Benzo through the portal. I am loving this gameplay here, actually, from Benzo. Really demonstrating that he is a player who should not be underestimated. He is absolutely a monster on this hollow and of conquest in general. And that is going to be that. Gordon going to get taken out. I think Prestige are going to have this one in the bag right now. Maybe a res from Atalante. No. Get shot down there by a rip. Lovely interrupt there by that Mesmer. Putting that CC to work. Fly falls as well. The Atalante will surely fall after. I don't think he'll be able to hold on for much longer there. There is the renewed focus. But after that, he's got nothing left. He's going to try and get peeled out here by the Holosmith. But, oh, okay, I guess he is going to be able to cut away here. But I think this is going to be a GG in favor of Prestige. They aren't going to be able to hold point A. There it is. There's a decap. Payne grabbing himself point B. We are seeing a contested from Capablanca, but with Mio here, that decap is not happening anytime soon. And this is going to be Prestige winning, but Ultranum, now, even though like they were not really uh, they were not really sung, you know, not, not many bells and whistles for this team in this particular month, the AT, they are showing the fact that they are definitely a very, very powerful team here as well. Certainly a good map for them, I think. They're probably happy to see us. I think Prestige would probably uh, be even stronger on a map that has a bit more uh, in favor of their particular playstyle, right? A bit of a bigger map, a bit more of a rotation focus map there as well. Of course, this is a very, uh, this uh, Skyhammer here is very much known for being a team fight centric thing, which is great for Ultram, of course. But Prestige, they make it work anywhere. They make it work on Kylo. They make it work on the Skyhammer. And look, next round's going to be hype, guys. Like, next round is where we might end up seeing rank 55 dragons collide with either Prestige uh, or, of course, the Worms. The Worms have been having an easy time of it so far. That's thanks to their massive amount of qualifying points, as as does a lot of daily ATs, guys. He probably has, like, 3K QP or something ridiculous like that. I don't even want to know. I believe, guys, actually... You know what's funny? I'm going to tell you guys a fun fact. I believe Aeon has the most AT wins. Right, and then second is Azaz, right? There could, there's a good, you know, there's got to be a, surely there's got to be a competition going on there, guys. A little bit of friendly competition, a little bit of gaming going on there. So, you know, like they're both going crazy on these daily ATs, right? But, you know, like that's why they got all those QP guys. You get all that qualifying points, you win those ATs, you win the game, okay? It's good stuff. It really, really is. All right. There you go, right. So, I think the game, well, I think we know what we want to see, guys. It's going to be the Lakers, the Worms, into Prestige. They're probably, probably like, well, my, my, certainly their nemesis in some of the uh, previous tournaments that we've seen here. But they're going to have to handle, of course, uh, rank 55 as well. But this is going to be uh, kind of a preview of the quality of game that you might come to expect from the elimination rounds here as well. So we're definitely going to be leaping into that directly here. Ooh, Forest. Good map for it. Good map. Good map. Just a very standard one. I like it. Can you expect the Valerians? We can have a look at it in a little bit, yeah. But we definitely need to check out this game. This game is where it is at, guys. Wait, do you guys really want this? Um, do you guys really want this? Um, this emote here? Like, what do you want? Okay, wait, guys. If you don't look, okay, I'm gonna give you some advice. If you don't want to like leak your comp in Swiss, then don't play your comp in Swiss, or at least tell me that you're gonna like play a secret comp in Swiss. Don't tell me like while I'm spectating your match. What the fuck, guys? Come on. Um, look, do you guys want this emote, by the way, guys, right? Like, uh, wait, is this even good? Teapot bed, right? Guys, what, what, what the hell is this? Seriously, what the hell is this? Are you guys kidding me? Like, we're not adding that, right? This is, this is scuffed. Anyway, let's get down to business here, guys. It is daily AT. Oh, wait, no, it's not, guys. It is monthly AT. On the red team for Prestige, it is Pain on the DP Thief Rip. On the Mirage, Benzo on the Nade Hollow, Mio on the Scourge. What's, is he actually is he playing? Oh, he's playing Avatar, yeah. Avatar Scourge with, of course, Staff and Axe Focus. And Aeon, ooh, Aeon gonna rock out the Duelist Guardian this time, okay? A build that she's definitely well known to play instead of the Druid, but this time it's gonna be the Guardian, as we see there. Going up against, here we go. It is the legendary team, the Lakers, also known as the French Worms. Esprit on Prot Hollow. Frey, Core Necromancer. Azaz. On Renegade here, I believe. Uh, no, no, sorry, not Renegade. It is Condi Herald here from Azaz. Ignore the Jalus here, guys. He's on uh, Glint. Right? It's, it's going to be Glint and Malix. The legend is just a little bit bugged out right now. And finally, Draza on DP. I mean, Goku on Support Warrior. Wait, uh, actually, we already see. Oh, wait, hang on. Esprit about to go down there. Esprit falls already to Benzo and Pain. Went for that three node push. Gets punished for it. Draza now in trouble there as well. Rip looking for the kill onto the Thief. But first, blood goes to Prestige, guys. 
Goku coming in there, trying to make sure this node gets secured here for his team. Alza's going to just defend the Hench here, expecting the cross there from the Mesmer. And I, I do like this, like, good posturing here, I believe, here from Azaz. Azaz is now going to take the 1v1 to Aeon as Aeon goes for the cross. Meanwhile, mid stays stable, and Draza may even find the decap here. Doesn't quite get it. Payne's given to Maxine. In fact, gets a massive spike off onto Draza here as well. Payne looking to find that kill. Rip is available here as well. He's going for a beast, but he's not going to get that. Now, a spree back into the mix off respawn. Gets onto that node. We'll begin that contest. Meanwhile, Payne and Draza just fighting off node mid. Probably not super exciting right now. Although, Benzo actually gets into play and destabilizes the fight with those nades. Almost forces the kill there onto Goku. Goku backing off, but now comes back in. Dude, Benzo! Benzo 1v2-ing almost! What am I watching, guys? Benzo! I mean, look, guys, okay, you know, he's, uh, he's activating if you guys catch my drift, right? Like, Benzo ready to go right now. Nearly kills Goku and Frey. Mio now coming into play here as well for the bonus meme. That should be a kill to Goku. And it is a kill on Goku. Goku goes down. That's a massive kill. Aeon did die here in this uh, in this fight over there. Draza gets a bit of a stabby stabby combining with that Konya. But Esprit goes down again. Esprit self-resing. Rip doesn't know. Rip knows now, actually. Drawing some attention away from Goku, at least for the time being. But Worms is having a tough time. Is there any revive potential? I don't think anyone can really get to Esprit to get him back into play here. Rip maybe now thinking about a beast, but Prestige with the two cap. Benzo and Mio controlling middle right now. And Aeon, as Azaz was forced to push into the fight on mid. Aeon will get the free decap. This is actually so good for Prestige. Prestige in such a good spot right now. And a beast as well from Rip. Of course, Mirage annihilates the beast because confusion is very effective against AI creatures, of course, because they don't know to stop attacking. And Rip going to clean that up very, very quickly. There's the beast. One, two, five points right now for Prestige. And Aeon locking down Goku in the 1v1. Um, we're going to see Esprit come back off respawn again. And then obviously replace Goku so he can rotate elsewhere. Draza getting driven away here as well by Rip and Pain. This is an amazing start here right now for Prestige. Prestige looking so big. Mio and Benzo going big. Draza so low right now. Rip trying to hunt him down. The stealth is good though from the thief. And he gets the kite. Gets the disengage fairly effectively. Payne grabs the mine. That's now capped. Aeon stalling this 1v1 of course. Pretty much forever into Esprit. Esprit might eventually be able to win. Uh, win the node, but the Guardian will certainly take its time there. Finally, the team fight is forced by the Worms. They're able to dislodge Prestige from the keep here. But are they even going to get the node? Nice fearing, actually, is going to maybe shove Mio away. I think that should be a cap. So Frey is going to get that cap. Very nice there for the Lakers. Meanwhile, blue team looking to push onto the Henge once again. Here they come. Banned Azers. Uh, shoves Aeon away there. Of course, if you do ever see these 3 3s that is where things are great for Blue. Like, Blue, they want to have these fights. They've got that Konya. They've got the Necro. They've got the support, right? Like, they want to be in these fights where they can actually just straight up attack the enemy. Me, smash, enemy team. Draza will probably eventually get this decap here on the mine. Of course, he is attacking a point as a thief into a thief 1v1. And that will, of course, lead to a lot of stealthing. And there you go, there's the decap. But still, there's a bit of a point deficit here, I think, actually. And right now, like, this lich one, this is a dead lich. I mean, like, this is a dead necro, man. He's got no life force left over uh, very, very shortly. As is currently peel him out. And look at this DPS. Look at this damage here from Benzo Miyoda. It's too much. And yeah, you, look, guys, power block. You ain't casting banner, right? Power blocked onto the banner there. There's nothing that Goku can do there to get that revival. That is the end of that. And Worms... They fall. Goku going to fall here as well. It's not going to happen here. Goku taken out. That's the end of that. Worms do have the sides now as Draza was able to win that node. Respawn's coming out shortly, but they're still going to be outnumbered temporarily. And here comes the Warpath from Prestige. They have that damage. They're looking to get some kills, but oh no. Rip looking to actually heal himself by dying and respawning. The only way you can on Mesmer right now. Unless he can get an out of combat. But that's not going to be easy. And even though they find that kill, they don't actually get there. They're actually going to end up losing the map over there. Like, Draza almost like putting, putting in a lot of work, actually, by winning this 1v1. Uh, winning that node there on his Thief. As is now trying to get in here and contest there and hold that node while the Thief peels him out there a little bit. But actually, Draza are about to get naded by Benzo pretty hard. Or at least leaves Az in a 1v1. Goku and Esprit are rotating over. And that's what we've got to see. Can Azaz hold off? He's got to try and hold it as much as he possibly can. He gets the hold. 
Very nice there from Azaz to actually survive long enough there for a spree. And I think a spree will be left to hold that node while Azaz rotates into the team fights. Uh, Frey looking to maybe go for the beast, but Rip is nearby. He might be able to steal this, actually. He's going to go for it. Does he get it? And he does not. Ooh, that is unfortunate, actually, um, for Prestige. Losing that beast sucks. And all of a sudden, now they're in a bit of an awkward spot. They are, are outnumbering here onto Frey, but Goku arrives, and this is a big problem. Benzo falls here in Rhodes. Mid is still held by the red team, but here's the thing. like They can't really rotate away from this, and a spree is going to start a 1v2 here in mid, and it's a good a 1v2 here as well. I don't think a spree will actually die 1v2 into Aeon and Mio. He may even find the decap here fairly shortly into Aeon, though that is not going to happen anytime soon. But, oh, dude, look at red. Red is so trapped around middle. They can't rotate away from this. As is dealing with the mine there. Frey looking at Henge. This is now looking very, very good for these worms. Worm content, worm gaming, guys, okay? Very, very nice indeed. I'm liking this, guys, okay? I'm liking this right now for the worms. A very rocky start, but this is how you beat Prestige. I mean, like, ultimately, guys, this is what you've got to do against Prestige's comp. Prestige, they're going to look to rotate quickly. They're going to find kills. They're going to put you in a bad spot. But if you can actually get a bit of a lock on the map, that is where uh, Prestige will, of course, have difficulty when you can deny them value out of their roaming composition. Certainly not over just yet. Very, very close indeed. But uh, Spree grabs mid and Thief into Prot Hollow. On point, that's going to be very, very long. I actually saw that the Thief can actually kill a Prot Hollow 1v1 potentially. But you are dealing with the big worm here, guys. So the big worm, not any Prot Hollow. He'll be able to hold that quite nicely. And of course, you'll see on the other side of the map, Benzo into Frey 1v1. And uh, I think that's going to be very annoying for Benzo to stand on, though. Particularly now with Draza coming into play. I think we may even see a kill onto Benzo. He's going to try and cut away as best he can. Elixir S now activated, but look at the Heart Seeker. Supply Crate is nice and draws it in a bit of trouble, but there's the Fear Ring onto Benzo. He's got nothing really left over right now. Not a lot going on. Yeah, he's going to have to stealth and just run away and wait for some cooldowns to come back because he knows he cannot hold that 1v2. Meanwhile, Az is still holding firm here as well. Goku getting spiked hard there. Pain and Mirage, that hit squad there from Rip and Pain. Get the kill on the Warrior. And Az is going to have to give it the no. They're cutting away just preemptively so he doesn't end up dying here. But again, look at that point league. Okay, look at that flat line, guys. Okay, a bit of a complete plateau in terms of points. And the blue team, they just keep getting more and more and more. Benzo decaps mid, but Esprit is here to try and hold on for a little bit longer. As it should be able to wriggle away here as well. Yeah, looks like he should be able to get that disengage fairly effectively. Shield up here as well. Staff corners will be able, and he's going to simply move from contesting uh, the mine to contesting the keep instead. Aeon going for a beast. Should be able to get that uh, pretty quickly. Guardian again actually is very good at dealing with these beasts in a pretty good amount of time. But beast is not really going to be enough at this stage. Right, 25 points is nice. Actually, wait. Is Draza going to steal it? Doesn't get the steal actually. At like the backstab, not quite enough there. Good spike there from Aeon and Rip to try and finish the job there. And actually does put uh, Draza in a bit of a situation where he loses a lot of his health. But Esprit trades all of that and grabs himself that cap. And uh, I mean, like, this is going to be annoying here. Like, Aeon... And Rip, they can definitely kill a Spree, but it's going to take a while. A Spree's got full cooldown, so there's actually time for Blue Team to actually rotate to him. Like, Draza can maybe get over there in time, or maybe Goku. In fact, Goku might just grab over there very quickly, but actually, never mind that, because Prestige end up losing Benzo here on mid. Uh, Frey and Azaz get that kill, get the keep, and now it's going to be Azaz moving over to help a Spree. A Spree has now used a lot of his cooldowns to survive here, but he's not dead just yet. And when Azaz gets here, this 2v2 will start to get a little bit more exciting here. Uh, for the red team, they're going to have to start thinking about probably leaving it. I don't think it will really work out super well. Uh, provided that uh, the Esprit doesn't die right now, this fight will start to go in their direction very surely. But never mind, dude. Power blocks the heal. And there it is. Big power block there from Rip. And boom, gets the stomp. So very nice Mesmer play here from uh, Prestige. But is it going to be quite enough? As you can see, 410 points in favor of the Lakers right now. Keep still held. Benzo grabbing the Henge. But they've got to actually play three now. I don't think a two cup's actually enough. Two cup is not good enough. They need actually two cup with Beast would be good enough. So it's nearly enough. And looks like they are going to be able to neutralize middle here at the very least. As you see Frey forced to get over. Actually, no. Goku arrives at the very last second. Actually stand on that point and make sure it's going nowhere. And now Az is here too. And suddenly, this is looking like a fantastic fight for the blue team. Two cap is good and all, but they're going to lose it soon anyway. Because Draza can probably find that decap fairly effectively. And Benzo... It's going to be 1v1 into a spree. And it's going to be Prot Hollow into nades. And, well, that's going to be good for the Prot Hollow here. The 1v1 potential is just simply too good. 
uh, right now for Worms leader. He'll eventually neutralize that node as well. So that means they're forced to win this fight. They actually are doing a good job in this fight, though, to be fair. They get the decap. So all of a sudden, Prestige in is a, is a winning situation. Pain completely pops off as well. Actually denies the decap to Draza, even looking for that 1v1 kill there. So very nice play there from Pain. Draza not getting any value out of his rotation there whatsoever. Pain securing that node. Draza, however, is going to get the slight advantage on moving around the map. Looks for a kill onto Aeon. Interrupts the heal there, I believe. And they might be able to find that kill very, very shortly. But no, a big shield. Dude, what a shield vibe not back there from, uh, from Aeon, actually. Completely trolling the offensive. And all of a sudden, Worms in trouble, actually. Like, it's not over yet. Rip going to try and stomp that. Should be an easy hand reser. Oh, Mantra, dude. Like, the AoE CC is so strong. But not quite strong enough. Okay, not quite strong enough there. And as it does get revived up almost instantaneously. You can see there, that 1v1 there. Benzo, he may be good on his nades, but he cannot match the Prot Hollow at all. And Lich now coming out there from Frey. That might be about to seal the deal. Just this single node is so good right now for the Lakers. They're just holding firm. They refuse to die. They are not going anywhere anytime soon. Of course, Benzo will now be able to force Esprit away there. But I think Esprit's going to actually play Node here. Yeah, he's going to play for it and try and hold on as long as he can and then wait for Goku. Is Goku going to get here in time, though? Uh, we already see a lot of damage onto Esprit. Esprit in trouble. He's got Spectrum Shield, but he might have done there. But no, the barrier and healing, the shouts all get popped at the same time, generating massive healing for Esprit. And that one Node is enough. Like, yeah, there's... They've got to decap this. Like, Prestige must decap this node. They can't allow this to go unchecked. They need a two cap and they need to get beast at this stage, right? There's no way out here uh, for them here. This is going to be very, very difficult indeed. Extraordinarily difficult, guys. Holy shit. Someone just got infetti and confetti and hazard. That's incredible, guys. Holy shit. Arrow on fire drops the festive confetti. That is insane. Congratulations there. Uh, oh, wait. Draza and Rip kill each other. And that should be a downstate win battle um, for the. Uh, for the, uh, the Mesmer, actually. Mesmer downside, dude, is beast mode, man. This Phantasm, look at this guy. Gah! 3k damage and rip. Able to actually accomplish victory in that 1v1. But still, that one node, guys. One node is all you need. Frey and Draza do both die. So if they decap this in, like, one second, they can still win. Uh, but, nah, it's not gonna happen. Azaz, Esprit, and Goku all planted on that node. But what a close game, guys. Close ass game. That is insane, guys. Okay, that is insane worm content guys worm gaming worm memes worms beat prestige in swiss but very closer as you can see 434 to 500 these worms they're gonna have to maybe step up their game a bit guys because 55 are waiting for them probably well maybe even in the next game actually it may be waiting for them there as well and prestige of course will certainly be back for round two in the eliminations and that is certainly no laughing matter there. Very close game indeed. Very, very close game, my friends. Incredible stuff. Incredible gaming. Incredible memes. Very nice. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh, incredible stuff. It is not impossible. So let's see. What do we have? Do we have any spicy games here, guys? Any spi- Oh! Yeah. As I suspected, guys. Swiss has come through, and it's going to be the Worms, aka, right, the Lakers, into rank 55 Dragons. Red team, we've seen them in the last game, to Spree, Frey, Azaz, Draza, and Goku on Guardian. Moving away from the Warrior, going back to the Guardian, yep. More uh, Healy Booney support compared to the Warrior, but... A little bit uh, easier to lock down, but oh my goodness, what have we got here, guys? It is Syndrona on the DP Thief, the Master of Disaster on the Support Warrior, Dra on the Duelist Pro Holosmith, Zan, the Nade Man dressed as a banana on the Nade Hollow, and Boyce, he's actually uh, pretending to be a Herald right now. Now, he could play Power Herald, but he may go for the Renegade a little bit later and simply concealing what exactly he is. He could be a, could he be a Comni Herald? Could he be a Renegade? Could he be a Power Herald? We don't know, guys, okay? We do not know, but I think this is a match that a lot of people have been waiting a very, very long time for. And well, you're about to get it, guys. Here we go. It is the Lakers, the Worms versus Rank 55 Dragons here on Kylo. And it's going to be a Renegade here from, Z uh, from Boy, sorry. He locks it in at the last second. Renegade roaming it out. Oh, hang on. We see a big switch up here, though, actually. Frey and Azaz both on Renegade here. 
And that's going to be a big kind of return to normality. Such like the worms known for the renegade. Let me put it like that. Okay, and they're going to have two of them here. In a way, uh, a similar, both very similar styles, right? We have a prot hollow for sides. Then we have two roamers, and it's essentially going to be uh, renegade thief hollow, right? Um, for this team here, and it's going to be uh, thief renegade renegade, right? For the worms. So worms are doing double renegade thief, and it's going to be hollow renegade thief for rank fifty-five. Let's see which one of those is going to be better here. Of course, uh, actually, interesting. They push uh, they push Dra to far to 1v1 into a spree and leave Zan to actually cap mid there. Wait, Dra dude, Dra's is dead, man. He's already dead. Dude, I, I was not expecting that to happen. Dra's are immediately ints into Boy Sind and Misha. Uh, that is not what I expected there. Wait, did, wait, did, wait, did they just win 3v4? What the hell is even going on there, guys? Seriously, this is why they call Boys the God of Slayers. Okay, they don't call him that anymore, because of course he actually is now uh, officially Boyce in-game. He made his name worse by downgrading it from God of Slayers uh, to Boyce. You know, very low energy there. But Goku now falls too. There's a kill on Goku. Zan can probably stop that out with an S here, may, potentially here too. Yeah, he does actually have S available. Might go for it. Yeah, they just get the cleanup here as well. Goku goes down. Uh, we're going to see Frey go down here as well. And Azaz. We force to try and wriggle away as best as he possibly can. We do still have map control going in favor of the worms, though, to be fair, actually. They've got the windmill, and they actually get full cap on the mansion as well, as uh, um, Draza goes there off respawn to get that lockdown. As is kiting well, but unfortunately, you can only do that for so long. Zan and Boyce on the hunt get that job done. However... Esprit does get away with this. He's not down yet. Gets his heal. And Goku is here to support. As is very, very low. And they're going to have to give it that note. It's a four-man push here from rank 55. Esprit already looking to get back in, though. He actually wants to try and deny the cap here, but looks like, is he going to make it? No, Basilisk Venom actually denies it. Now he's going to have to 1v1 draw on an enemy node, which is not ideal. And, of course, this mansion cap is going to be very, very short-lived. There's boys already moving here to kind of deal with this here. He's going to start moving over there. And I don't think Draza wants to 1v1 that. He actually might try. Looks like he's going to go for it. Zan actually dies, though. That's a massive kill there from Frey off race one. And, look, you, you guys can see this, right? Even players as good as 55, they can overextend, right? They, they definitely overextend there. They push it too far. The respawns can through and Zan dies. That is a big kill there as well. However, just that lethality, right, uh, coming out there from John Sin, that aggression finds the kill on Esprit. Esprit does get back on his feet though, thanks to the uh, Signet from Goku. Good revival there, good reactions there, and stability usage, of course, and Aegis to deny any kind of interruption coming through from the blue team. And Worms, actually, you know, they've, they've seemed to have found their footing, actually. Oh, Misha does not see Goku! Oh, no! Oh, wow. That's actually a big mistake there. Goku, she gets the decap on mid. Uh, Misha just did not see him there for whatever reason. That is massive because we actually see now a two cap uh, in favor of uh, the Lakers. And now Draza dying again. I've got to say, Draza is, get, is having a rough game. He's having a really, really rough time. As is forced to back off now. Sind initiating the Heartseeker. But Goku does arrive there, but they're still outnumbered. They don't have their thief. And that's going to be just so much damage. I just, I don't know. Sure. Yeah, they can't hold this. They've got to kite this out. They're going to try and disengage it. They're doing a good job of it so far, though. They really, really are. They absolutely are. They get out. They're doing some work in there. And there it is. They are done. Goku and Azaz survive. Very nice play. Particularly from Azaz, the Renner God himself surviving there. But now Goku's in trouble. That Guardian, not as tanky as it once was, gets the heal, but here come the nades from Zan. Here's the DBS from Sind, and Goku is going to fall into the downside. That Frey grabs that cap on mid. There it is. Misha, now under fire there. Both supports going very low, but Draza dies again! Dude, he's drawing off respawn! Oh, no. And Thief, losing the Thief is bad. Sind going to be able to wriggle away here, too. Two cap, though, for the Worms. They're getting ahead, even though they're losing these fights, losing these players. They do seem to actually have the slightly better rotation so far in this game. It's still going to be an outnumbered fight, but it will be mitigated, of course, guys, because Sin is busy capping. This does give a slight moment here for uh, the French Worms, for the Lakers, to kind of restabilize themselves a little bit there. Goku respawns, heals up Azaz, Azaz survives there. Both Azaz and Frey really pushing Renegade to the limit right now. Oh, Dra actually finds the decap though. Like, Dra is certainly uh, one of the best duelists you'll ever find in the game, and he's actually having a good time into Esprit. Esprit, of course, uh, a very powerful prot hollow in his own right, but Dra 
slightly finding the edge right now, forcing that decap. And 55 now have a massive map of edge, killing both the Renegades. Uh, we see Frey uh, getting revived, but Azaz gets stomped out there by Boyce. And there we go, 55 getting back into this. Draza doing the only thing he's having a good time doing this game, getting that decap onto the mansion while Esprit is holding this neutral. But Esprit is going to be 1v3 now. Sin, Boyce, and Draza looking for that kill. Esprit! Uh, now will be reinforced by Goku and Frey off respawn there. So they are good to go, at least for the time being. Draza can actually try his hand at 1v1 and into Zan. But it looks as maybe trying to stall this node out there. Keeping his team in the lead just 10 points in favor there. Azaz is going to match in there here with Draza. And you can see that the Worms, they just want to play this 3. They want to play as many 3 nodes as they possibly can. Split up 55 and just deny that team fight. Perhaps not feeling so comfortable. Want to play that very heavily rotational sign. Trying to outmaneuver and outrotate here as well. Looking for a kill on the Zan. They actually can't find it. But Sind does get shoved away there as well. And it does appear that Draza and Azaz find themselves a pretty nice 2v2 in this situation right now, at the very, very least there. Meanwhile, Frey and Goku are simply going to leave Draza. They don't want to waste too much time on the Prot Hollow. Instead, they want to find some value elsewhere on the map and then kind of leave that node open for the decap from Draza. Ah, oh, Draza gets chased down there by Zan. Zan nading his way to victory, gets that stomp before moving on to his next victims here on mid. And with that kill, 55 now ahead, and they get another one onto Azaz. Yeah, they're just really pushing these fights, pushing those kills there. Should be a confirmed kill there onto Azaz. I don't think there is a revival available for Goku. No, no signet for Goku right now. And that's another five points and a decap there as well. Sind able to back off there as well. After securing that kill, he can control them out there on the Thief, grabbing that mansion effectively. Meanwhile, though, Draza is now back off. Reesman will be able to actually go ahead and kill Dra here. Maybe that Pro Hollow is going to have a bit of a difficult time there. The red team going to go hard onto Dra here, but actually the fucking retail damage there really pumping hard onto uh, Esprit and Boyce arrives there. Very nice rotation here by Boyce. Boyce appears right in the nick of time there to deny any kind of damage there onto Dra and 55. They're starting to stabilize here. Here comes the three cap as well. Here it is. There's the clock tower, the cock tower comes into play and here it is. They're not going to quite get it just yet anyway. Draza will be able to decap over there onto the mansion, I believe. But I think we're going to see more kills. I think Esprit and Goku are under some serious threat. Right now. The damage here from that blue team. Here comes the pain. Right, on to Goku. Goku goes down. Esprit lives there. They're going to go for us. Nice knock by that. But, oh, Misha, the master of disaster, gets the battle. Stop, and that's going to implode the team fight. No support guard. No win, at least for the time being. 270, 70-point 70 lead now, 55. They're a player up. They're in an awesome spot. Draza, far is my home, guys, okay? Far is my home. Gets another decap there, but these 55 players, they are just so, so aggressive. I'm just loving the style here as well. They are finding kills left and right. Frey trying to hold on here. They're looking for something onto Zan, maybe, but their health bars tell a story, guys. They tell a story that 55 is not dying anytime soon. Send matches the decap. They're going to position uh, Esprit here on the mansion instead and leave Adraza. Go ahead and decap that bit here. Comes Adra. And this is going to allow Sin to immediately move away there, leaving this elite treasure. In fact, Sin's going to play for the kill here. In fact, he knows that the both the renegades are locked up on mid, so there's no help coming in for Esprit anytime soon. And Goku in trouble again. He's got no renewed focus. Is he just dead here? Boy, he's still not. He wants that kill. The nades. Here they come. And Zan, he's going to. I think he's got S here as well. He's not. He doesn't even need to. He's just going to cleave out there with boys. And Goku goes down again. It's just so much DPS. Like, there's this great coordination here between Boyce and Zan. They're really playing well here. Just training down those targets. They are holding W for all they are worth. Me hold W, me kill. That is what 55 say, and they are really pushing that strategy to its limits and showing how powerful that level of coordination can be. Draw and Goku. Uh, wait, go, wait, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, Misha, sorry. Uh, holding it off there versus Esprit and Azaz. Gonna leave Dra 1v2 and he won't be able to hold that forever. He's gonna have to concede that. There's a lot of damage. Maybe Boy's gonna rotate in there to try and help that out. But no, looks like they might just leave Dra just to troll that and just try and win a fight elsewhere. Here it is. They're gonna try and win this elsewhere uh, on the map there. Frey forced to move over to the windmill to get that decap. Will be able to do so quite effectively. So I actually think that the rotation there did not actually work out very well for 55. They probably should have tried to kill Mansion instead because now they are going to be two capped. Once again, putting Red Team in a winning position. But now look at this out number here. Look, looks like the Worms though are going to be able to match this rotation. Xan a little bit trapped on mid. Is actually going to look for a 1v1 maybe into Azaz. Now, this is actually a really big interesting meme here. Like, it, whoever wins this fight is going to be in an amazing spot. And yeah, wow. Really nice rotations there. 
uh, from the uh, from the worms there. Getting a spree onto that mansion, uh, kind of like leap forcing the blue team to respond to that very heavily. Not getting a lot of value, not getting that kill onto a spree. And you can really see the effect of a side note there, guys. Like a spree was outnumbered there, and that allowed his team to kind of force blue team to respond there quite effectively and all of a sudden you have this game very very winnable all of a sudden we're going to see rank 55 try and destabilize this a little bit right now it's going to be as into boys 1v1 now that's one hell of a match right there guys of course the original renegade versus one of the most legendary players in guild wars 2 pvp let's see how it goes boys actually putting in some good work right there a spree coming in there. The Prot Hollows arriving to help out there. Renegades here. Let's see how that 2v2 goes. I've got no idea how that one's going to happen here as well. Boys maybe having a slight edge in the 1v1 as things continue to move on there. But Sin very, very low. Driven away from all these encounters. And this is exactly what the Worms want. The Worms actually have themselves some pretty nice 2v2s here. Where this... And actually Sin dies there. Wow. Frey even finds that kill with the Renegade. And that should be confirmed. However, this has the, has have the windmill open. Can Frey actually deny this? Does he have a port right now? He actually... Oh, he can't get there in time. I don't think. No, he will not be able to. He's on Jalus. Can't put in anyway. Now he's going to have to try and 1v1 the nade hollow. Should be able to actually hold on to this, at least for the time being. But all of a sudden, guys, 55 actually in a hell of a lot of trouble. A spree, 1v1 on his node. Mid decap comes through there from Goku and Azaz. Misha looking for the clock tower capture, but Zan forced away. The Thief plus from Draza, so much value. And there it is again. Another two cap, guys, okay? Another two cap here. Very clean rotations here uh, from those. And Draw falls to Azaz. Wow, that's very bad, actually, for 55. Has 55 thrown the game right now? Zan popping off, nearly finding a kill onto his onto, uh, onto Frey. Doesn't quite get it, though. Boys looking for the kill. and But, oh, no! Draza actually kind of leaves um, Frey on his own here. Does he have enough mitigation to hold on until Goku arrives? There's got to be a signet here, I think. Is he going to go for it? Can he find it? No. The steal is big death from Goku. And denying that, and that will once again destabilize the uh, fight here a little bit. They're just not quite fast enough there. Goku not able to get into play. He does have renewed focus. He's not dying in terms of, and the decal on mid is good. So Worms now ahead in this game. Can they survive until Frey? They need that second run again. Can they hold on? Beautiful CC here though. Keeping Goku safe. There's a the renewed focus. They want that Guardian and they want him dead now. Five points lead right now for the red team. Worms is a bit ahead, but Goku just getting trained. They've got to peel him out here. They've got to do something. He's in such a hold his port fails as well. He can't get back up there. He can't get the kite. Frey is back now. But is it going to be enough? The Jade wins is great, but there's nothing for Goku. One port from anything, and he is a dead man walking. Abilities are setting the car cooldown. Looks like Goku might have just barely gotten away with it, but no. Here's Zan. Here come the nades. Is it going to be enough? He gets his heal up in a little bit. Oh, five seconds until he gets his heal. He tries his best to stay, but they're going to find the kill. Sin gets it, and the banner is going to land there, but no banner interrupted. Could Azus get this? Could, oh my god, are they going to get that res? No. Oh my god, that was a lot. That was a lot of damage. And kills, putting rank 55 back into the winning position once again. A decap's got to come through. But yeah, Dra, he knows the win condition. He knows. Just hold on. Hold on until the game ends. As is about to fall. And Sin and Boys find that kill. Draws are so, so low right now. A spree contesting, but if Sin decaps this mansion, it's going to be a pretty much game over situation. A spree realizes he's going to move over to try and handle that as best he possibly can. Draza contesting mid for all he's worth. But with Boyce here, I don't think it's going to happen. Frey is going to fall. Goku gets the revive, does get the revive. Denying that cap there. But it's 1 minute 50 left on the clock right now. Two nodes in favor of the blue team. Something's got to happen. It's got to happen now. They've got far They've got... 20 seconds to win this game uh, have the Lakers. They've got to win, and they've got to win now. Azaz now moving in here. They're going to be 1v2, but Misha on support. Warrior, we have to stabilize that quite nicely. Yeah, Esprit, he, he's so... He can't leave Mansion, because the second he does, this is going to happen. As soon as he pushes away, Cinder's going to move elsewhere and find a kill or find a decap. He finds the kill onto Frey, and that's game over. There's no recovery anymore for the Worms. One minute to go. Rank 55. Very scary there. We even see the Frenchies get a brief lead in this game three quarters of the way through, but it's not going to be quite enough. Rank 55 are going to maintain their undefeated streak in these tournaments in the month of the 80s. They're going to get the job done. They are not losing in Swiss whatsoever. They have secured their victory, and there it is. 50 seconds left on the clock. A very narrow victory there. And honestly, you know, You've got to, 
you've really got to get hounded to the worms there. Like, the worms, I felt like they lost almost every single fight, right? Like, I mean, look at the kills. Like, the kills, just kill after kill after kill after kill for Frank 55 the entire time. Like, the strength of those worms is the rotation. They rotated so well there, right? They really, um, you know, I mean, did how many times did Goku and Draza die, right? They were, like, dead half the fucking game, man, okay? Unbelievable, right? So very good management there from uh, the Worms, from the Lakers, to even be able to survive this long and actually make it that close because they just played the map extremely well. Incredible stuff, guys. Incredible gaming, incredible content. Yeah, lose basically every fight, still get 450 points. I mean, those Worms, like, they are on it, guys. Like, those Worms are switched on in terms of that map awareness, guys. They are everywhere. Worm gaming, Worm content, Worms, lads, let's go. And look, we're going to be seeing them again, that's for sure. Worms are certainly not out, guys. Believe me, Worms will have their revenge later on. Look, we've got, dude, wait, we've got 1,100 viewers. Holy shit. Yeah, but anyway, let's see how this game goes. See if we can check this one out here for the side. Here we are on Legacy of the Fofar. Flandre, Fangirl here. Feifei on Mirage. Curl on the Duelist Ranger. Belvedar on Con the Herald Stern. Going to relock to the Tempers instead of the Guardian, in fact. And Lyca. On the Hollow Smith Gaming right now, guys. Hollow Smith Gaming, Gaming, Gaming. Here we go. They're going to look for a kill onto the Scourge already. It looks like the team fight going very well, actually, for the blue team right now. They are pumping some serious DPS. The Scourge, so so pressure. Held on Ultra Pressure as well. And Chico, not exactly a much of a better set. And there you go. There is the Scourge down. Is there a potential revive? I don't think so, actually, because Binster is going to fall as well. Held on, maybe going to try for a revive onto the Thief, but might not get either, actually. No, everyone is just dead. Held is going to die here as well. Red team do actually get a slightly better edge in terms of the map there as they were able to cap the waterfall completely there and also uh, leave their quarry at least contested for the time being but Stern gonna grab mid blue team gonna surge forth to try and deal with this hollow smith meanwhile we actually see the push from a Lyca into the um, into the quarry here at least for the time being so this is probably gonna be a pretty favored game judging by the opener guys pretty favored game in favor of the blue team here by the looks of that uh, want to show a uh, cool build? I mean, you can if you want, right? Okay, what cool build do you want to show off, guys? Back in the day, I had a 45 kilobit download, and a friend went ahead and done some my guild suit. It took me three days to get it back on. Ouch. That is unfortunate, guys, okay? That is unfortunate. Uh, which team was Feifei used to be in? Uh, Feifei, um, so, well, I mean, Feifei's played in a lot of teams. She's kind of like a bit of a mainstay of the Guild Wars 2 community. Uh, but she is known for playing in the Azodome Academy uh, as well, the Azodome School of Shooting. And also, <laughs> uh, the Quarantine Crusaders is probably the team that she's played, uh, I suppose, most consistently on. Uh, with Curl, Sigurdil, Andreas, and the crew there uh, for that team. Yeah, this is looking pretty favoured towards blue, judging by the opener. Good uh, too bad they are, they are actually slightly ook ooking the rotations a little bit here. Like, letting, letting Binster maybe get more value than he should be getting right now. But if they just keep winning the fights, they're going to win the game here pretty effectively. Pretty damn effectively indeed. Okay. Cole, auto correct me. Oh, I say, oh, you want to look at Cole build? Yeah, Cole is playing the uh, Ranger Duelist build. It's actually, I actually kind of like, I think this build's actually fun, right? This build is pretty cool. So, uh, whenever you get Fury, you get Opening Strike. Opening Strike um, always crits, right? Because you have remorseness. And you gain Fury when you weapon swap, right? You gain Fury when you use a survival skill, right? Like, you gain Fury when you pet swap as well, right? Like, all that kind of stuff. I actually think this is, like, a really fun build. Um, you know, it's it's, it's honestly pretty aids, too, because it's got, like, a, a lot of CC. Like, the dazes last long. Whenever you CC, you get, like, a 50% damage mod as well, or 25% damage mod. As well, which is really, really juicy, to be honest. So you get a huge amount of DPS there. Like, your mauls and, like, Axe 3s are going to absolutely like, slap people, right? You're going to slap people hard with this stuff as well. Uh, so yeah, it's just, like, it's uh, just the, the 1v1 build. And you're quite tanky, right? Because you go Valkyrie. So because you, you don't need precision, right? Because you have guaranteed crit from your opening strike. And obviously, you have, like, infinite fury, too. And this means that you can run kind of tanky uh, rune and amulet. So you can be a very durable duelist here with your Valkyrie amulet and rune of resistance. And still do actually a lot of damage. You do quite a lot of damage here. You kind of slap on this build, right? You slap. Yeah, we can go into I think this game's going to go to blue team almost certainly. So we can go ahead and take a look at the Ultranum into rank 55 here. Let's see what they've got going on here, guys. Let's see what they have got going down. Wait, where is it? Aha, here we are. Again, it's going to be a very straightforward map, right? This is just, it's, it's legacy, right? They're going to fight each other and 
some of them will die, and then whoever dies the most probably loses, right? Uh, like, there's, you know, rotations are very straightforward here. There's nothing going to be too funky, too crazy. It's just going to be a case of, like, whichever team is going to rotate the best is going to win. Okay? Not the best, right? Dude, the innovation of the River Drake is here, okay? The River Drake is in play. So, here we have it. It's going to be, we've seen Rank 55 last game. They need no introduction. Let's take a look at Ultradom, Shuriken, Support Guardian, Gornet. Condi Herald, Jesus on duty, Sage Splitter on, oh, Prot, he's going to play Prot, not Nades this time. Okay, so it's going to be Prot, so they're going to try, oh, what, oh, Cabo Blanco fly, Bully Sind instantly getting a kill there with his 3 0 play. In fact, it's not a 3 0 play, they completely ignore Waterfall and let Zan just immediately go for that cap as he crosses over there to far. So, one node apiece, but with a kill in favor of Ultranum right now. So they're going to have to be a little bit careful in this team fight, of course, at least for the time being. And Dra actually not having the best of time here. They're getting CC'd very, very hard. Good support coming out there from Misha. And Fly gets caught in the cross. And they gets exploded. Boyce on the hunt onto Fly. But I think the Thief should be able to get away here. And in fact, he's even going to get himself a decap there quite nicely. And Lanty certainly the target though. Right now for 55. Here they come. Forcing that renewed focus. Crazy DPS there from Sin. Sin, he's mad now. He's pissed. He wants his revenge. He wants to go for that kill on this Guardian. Adelante going to try and heal then. Does get a great empower. Healing himself up quite nicely. And actually, the team fight. Ultra don't win the team fight. Banner maybe from Misha? No. Fly is going to deny that completely. And Ultra Num, guys, spam this thumb for Ultra Num. They win the fight. They are known as a team fight team, having their roots, a lot of them, from playing at GVG, of course, right? Which is all about team fighting. In fact, it's a 15 man team fight. They know their way around the fight, guys. Believe me, they absolutely do. And they win the first one. Ultra Num with a two cut run out, 45 points ahead on this game is a uh, drop. Finds his home on the waterfall, though, keeping the team in the game, at least for the time being. Respawn's coming out there. Sin just being annoying right now. Running around, poking people. But he's actually leaving himself a little bit vulnerable right now, in fact. Fly sees a bit of an opportunity. Smells a bit of blood with Cabablanca. Fly looking for the kill. Can't quite find it just yet. Gets a little bit no-scoped, actually, there by Fly. So Sin not out of the woods yet. Using a lot of his corners to survive there. Nice heart seeker, actually, there from Fly. Landing that heart seeker is huge. However, Adelante... Oh, that support guardian. It's such a juicy target in the team fight. Run, Adelante. Run for your life. No renewed focus this time either. That's actually big here. Like, if they kill Adelante, he's dead, right? There's no way around that. He's got to try and hold on for another 20 seconds. If he can slide 20 seconds, and he's kind of in the safe zone. But right now, he is not comfortable at all. The damage there from Sin and from Boyce is massive. And I it's going to be the kill. I think we might see a banner attempt here as well from Misha. But there it is. No need focus means you are a very sad guardian. They're going to have to hold on without their support for a very, very long time right now as well. Gornet. Maybe looking to be the next one. No, Cowblanca is certainly the victim there. Look at that damage. They're all training him down. Super hardcore. Take note. PvP apprentices, by the way. But oh my god. Never mind that. Don't take notes, guys. Don't look at this. Because somehow, Ultradum turned the fight. They don't need a support. And they win it anyway. Ultradum take out Zan. Send about the fall. Fly gonna find him, I think. He's so, so low right now. Gets the cell. They might be able to get the disengage, but 55 lose another team fight. Zan pushes his luck, goes in hard, and gets taken out there. They, yeah, the Kondiev, man. Seriously, Kondiev is insane, right? It's so much damage, right? Uh, if you can land this here, this is one of the, like, almost like one of the builds I feel people are kind of sleeping on a little bit. It's so good um, in these team fights. If you've got Kondiev in a team fight, you are going to annihilate, okay? Annihilate. Very, very hard there as well. Okay, meanwhile, Ultram now even looking potentially to turn their attention to a third no, but not quite actually. Uh, Dra kind of standing firm there as well. And I think it's almost like a very smart play here from Numb. They're just going to try and play two instead of kind of stressing themselves out too much. They're just not, they're not getting baited in by the far node here at all. They know that they aren't going to be able to rotate quite as effectively. They're a bit slower, right? They have the Guardian. They aren't that fast. The Kondirev, again, not very fast. But what they can do is just win every single fight and then win the game. Of course, the Thief can go for a decap there and kind of force Dra out of these fights to make sure it doesn't stay outnumbered there as well. But now, of course, they're going to actually have the advantage themselves as Dra is going to have to stay there for a little while. However, if he gets the decap on mid and plants him there, that's very scary. But look at this Sage Footer already rotating there as well on the pot to match that. Very nice play here from number. Adelante goes down again. There's a ripe target there. There's no reviving that. And Gornet's going to have to do miracle duty again. He's got to get another miracle right now. Sind is very, very low. If he went down, maybe that would be killable. But no, the stealth is good. 
Adelante trying to keep himself alive, maybe going for some kind of rally play here as well, but yeah, Gornet this time, no miracle from Gornet, no insane win there, no insane recovery, 55 clean it up, however, they do have a bit of ground to make up here, 100 points behind, uh, are 55, so they've got to step up here a little bit, they've got to get some work done. And Lanti now back off respawn, but Gornet will be dying here for a little while. Knocked off point, so can't really do much. And 55 now with the two cut, they're going to be crawling back into this game every second that this continues. And 55 planning their assault. Dra doing the uh, classic prot hollow rotation of me, AFK on node and hold it the entire game. And it's working out well. Uh, and this is what you've got to be careful of, guys. You've got to watch for that snowball. Fly gets caught. Gornet now back off respawn, so Ultram reset them. So they actually managed to hold on to mid that entire time, which is definitely really nice, actually. Uh, very well played there by Num to not lose a play. Of course, nearly losing Fly, but not quite. Sagebird baiting a 1v2 there, but Dra rotates in, and that enables Zan to leave and get into the fight where he really wants to be here. However... This does, of course, mean that the waterfall might get exposed somewhere. Because Boyce, again, probably not really going to want a 1v1. Again, he wants to be in these fights. He wants to try and get kills and just chase down. He is the assassin. Like, him and Sind are the chasers. The ones who are going to find these kills. Boyce playing very defensively. Yeah, he's, he's noting the fact that the prot hollow is going to come in there and try and contest into this. So, it looks like he's going to try and harass the hollow as much as possible. And eventually try and take the 1v1. Zan getting bullied super hardcore. They know that Zan is dead. They get the taunt. He's dead here, I think. He's got no S. That should be dead. The kill on Zan. Fly very, very low. Is there a revival? There's the banner. Zan back up. No interrupt on the banner. Zan not out of the woods yet either. 10 seconds here on the crate. Not going to be able to get that uh, just off there in time. But he does get the disengage. Gets his heal. And mid decap there in 55. They are ascending the stairwell of victory right now. Can they get back into this? And Boyce does hold that 1v1 until Dra gets there. And that's, of course, going to leave a much better map stay here in terms of rotations here for the blue team. And yeah, 55, they're definitely managing this well. Their players are being very smart with how they move here. Not leaving players in bad 1v1s for a very long time. Making sure their key teamfight players are available. Boyce knows there's a slight moment where they have this edge. They can actually go for a kill here as well. However, will be intercepted by Fly. And Boyce, a little bit exposed. But Misha is just moments away there with the heals, with the support. And that will deny any potential. And bit of a lockout here. Like, we've got to see something here. Like, something needs to happen right now. Ultram, they've got to find themselves a kill. They've got to find themselves a win. If it's in a team fight, if it's in a 2v1, so I'm going to outnumber there with a Thief. They've got to do it pretty soon, though. Because that gap, it's closing. It's closing very, very fast indeed. 313 points. 290. Here comes Rank V5. They want to get back in the lead. They had a bit of trouble in the game versus the Lakers. But Numb really giving them a run for their money in Legacy of the Fofar right now. Can they get back into this game? Just a few more moments and Rank V5 will be again in the lead. Or they're again in the lead. Will be for the first time in this game in the lead. Let's see if they can make that work. Can they make it happen right now? Atlante and Campanga trying to post, trying to find an opening into this node here. They really want to decap the waterfall there. They're in close now, but actually they've left mid a bit exposed. Like Sin coming in for the decap here. We'll be matched now by Fly. Uh, now Gornet coming in there to help out with that too. Of course, Zan isn't in the team fight. That is a bit of an opportunity right now for Ultram. Can they get a kill? But the Prot Hollow and the Warrior just slowing down this fight so much. They weren't able to get any value. And now Zan is once again on the warpath. Here he comes, flies super low and gets caught. I don't think uh, there's going to be any chance of a signet here. Yeah, instantly interrupted there by Sin with Steel and flies going to fall. And looks like there's a bit of a stranglehold right now on Ultranum. 55 are just not letting them get these team fights. They are not allowing them an inch in any of these encounters. It looks very, very good right now uh, for rank 55 Dragons. Just a solid two cap. Mid belongs to Ultranum. But unless another fight comes through right now, it's starting to look very, very bleak. Nearly 400 points for rank 55 Dragons. And Adelante not looking so good either. Does he have a renewed focus? He does not. And that is going to be a kill. There it is. Beautiful seven shot there from Boyce during that kill. Boyce very low, but he isn't dead. And that's the important thing there. And with Zan with the cleave there, Boyce with the cleave. That's not going anywhere. Wait, Battlezone was blinded. Uh, so no stomp uh, for Misha available. But there, 400 points. There it is. Mid probably going to get decapped too. And actually, yep, draw and send, get a kill on Fly. Sage split up. Not able to uh, get the job done here as well with Fly in the 2v2 situation there. And with mid decap, that is pretty much the death rattle for Ultranum. Certainly in Swiss. It's not over yet, of course, guys. Believe me, it's not certainly not over. And right, Ultranum will certainly uh, be in the Elims there in the top eight at the very, very minimum. And they can certainly hold a candle to the strength of both Prestige 
and of course uh, uh, and of course rank 55 here as well so I think we're gonna have a very very exciting um, the top uh, top four indeed the top four guys for this AT looking very very spicy Yeah, Lord would get the job done, but Lord is not gonna happen They do not have time for any of that kind of shenanigans. I'm afraid by any stretch of imagination. Who's Numb's Hollow? The Hollow is uh, Jesus, right? I prefer to say Jesus. I mean, it's Sage Buddha, but it's Jesus Okay, Jesus on duty uh, Prestige Jesus, Num Jesus. Here he is Thief what again? Nice thief there I know, I mean, look, Thief is strong, guys. Like, you know, like, Worms are playing Thief, uh, 55 are playing Thief, Num are playing Thief. Right, it's clearly um, a lot of value for a lot of these top teams. The gaming is here, the content is here, the memes are here. We are going to the moon. By the way, guys, subscribe now with Tier 1 or Prime subs. Support the content. And, look... As you can see, guys, we actually have 205 uh, paid subs right now. If you want to actually really support Guild Wars 2, subscribe with a paid sub, like a tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3 sub. If you go ahead and do this, guys, right, um, this will actually allow you, uh, this will allow us to get Guild Wars 2 on the Twitch front page. I need to maintain 200 paid subs, right, um, for three months. Then we can actually apply for Twitch front page, which is a massive viewer boost, potentially like thousands of viewer boosts, right? Like ERP3 was actually very successful for this reason. Like ERP3 got Twitch front page. This actually generated about about half of the viewers we had, which was 15,000. Wait, was it? No, 17,000. So about 8K viewers were from Twitch front page. So it's obviously a very, very powerful. Oh, dude, what the? Oh my God, Sind! Dude, Sin dies again at the start of the game. Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, Sin having a tough time um, in the openers here. But his team does get the uh, get them up anyway. Grabbing the field there. Boyce grabbing the field. And then Dra, I imagine, is securing the dragon. He is driven away, though, by Kid Scientist and Zed Scientist. What are we... What is this? We have Flamethrower Decap Scrapper here from Kid Scientist, okay? Luana on support. Wait. Wait. Stab Guard... With a hallowed ground, no signet, pure stab only. Okay. Then we have. Wait, what is this? Okay. Tenebrae here on the Renegade, kiting this out super hardcore. Zartak on Flamethrower Condi Hollow. I mean, guys, has science gone too far? I mean, I, I think it may have gone too far. I don't know what I'm looking at here, guys, but it, this, is some, this is some crazy shit. Okay, Worms Scientist's Multiplication. Trying some very experimental builds here. Let me put it like that. They're actually not faring too badly with it either. They can get themselves a 2 cap, but they can start to start winning. Dude, there's the knockback there. The Flamethrower knockback is massive, to be fair. But he gets knocked himself, actually. Loses the stability. Has no more stability available from... Oh, he doesn't have the Flamethrower trait. Dude, no Flamethrower trait. Low energy, okay? No Juggernaut. Not good at all. Ah, uh, Asna. Dude, Asna, where is the goddamn Asna Academy, dude? Like, what are you doing? Seriously, where's the Deadeye representation? Anyway, fairly close game so far, actually, by some, like, bizarre uh, reason here. Dude, imagine if 55 actually got knocked out by, like, this troll team. Like, that would be... I have to say, guys, I would consider that content. I don't know about you guys, but I would consider that a pretty fucking good meme. Actually, wait. Oh, it's Kala! Oh my god, it's Kala from Tenebrae, actually. I thought it was just like a bug. Um, but he's actually Jalus Kala Renegade. Bunkering the node down here um, with Luana on the support guardian here. Like, this is very high level French theory craft, guys. I want to make that good. This is French theory craft. Uh, they, you know, they are known for their. Dude, and Sin. Wait, Sin dies. Is there a res here? I think Misha is going to be able to get it. Does he actually have his banner available? He actually does not get... They actually stomp out Sind. No banner available. They need to get decaps, though, actually. They are down a node right now, like, with a uh, mid being held by Dra. Kid Scientist looking for a decap. Zed Scientist is actually in a little bit of trouble there with the AED. We'll heal him up very, very shortly there. As we'll get some massive burn stack, actually, onto Zan. Zan now being chased down by a thief. Of course, should be able to shove that way himself there fairly effectively. Meanwhile, we now actually have Tenebrae. Looking to go for this cap uh, onto this. Going to 1v1 into Boyce. Probably won't die in the Kala situation there. But this does leave Zan able to free decap there. Going to decap that Dragon node. And this middle node here as well is a big problem right now for the scientists. They've got to get rid of Dra somehow. Like, Dra is going to be a big problem because they have a lot of, like, kind of weird sustain troll builds. 
But they don't have a lot of damage, right? Like, they're able to kill Sin, but, I mean, that's a thief, right? Thief is not exactly the tankiest thing in the US. Prot Hollow is a different thing entirely, guys. It really, really is. It's not the same thing by any stretch of the imagination. However, 55 they are, seeming to be able to handle this. Uh, this uh, unusual strategy uh, from the red team, quite effectively. Uh, at least for the time being, anyway. They're just holding a pretty steady two-cap right now. The Kalarev looking to, to stall that out there for a little bit. The drug sign is now coming in there with the big heals. No cooldowns available for the Guardian. So Luana has got to be very, very careful indeed. Does get the kite, but here comes Misha. Oh, wait, there's actually a kill on Sind. Banner uh, well, actually went down to the shield buff res him, though. So what the banner actually, I believe, was wasted there, essentially, uh, as the shield buff got him back up on his food. But that means the shield buff is already pretty much burned. Meanwhile, we do finally see the decal there onto the dragon. Zan now in a 1v3. If Zan dies, that's actually really bad. Is he going to die? Oh, my God. Zan's gonna die, and bear in mind, banner was used. Guys, there's no banner for this. Zan falls. Is this gonna be a two cap for red team? Oh, boys though, with the stab, can they cleave it? No. Good res there, very nice. They didn't get that kill in time, and suddenly, this fight will be interned on its head. Zartak gonna try and rocket boots his way out there. Should be, he actually might be able to do it there. Zartak, very well known for playing with rocket boots. He really is. Okay, uh, he loves that ability, that's for sure, but They've got that node neutralized, but ah, not getting that kill on Zan is really bad. And mid being held by Dryer is huge. And Sin then able, because of the, you know, keeping those all those five players alive, immediately moves over there and is going to neutralize this node there as well. 55 should be able to uh should be able to win this game, I think. I mean, I think they've now kind of adapted to what the red team is doing here. Like Dra just really putting in work here as well. Like Dra holding mid for such a long time is so irritating here uh, for the red team. Their, their strat is they want to make sure that the nodes are at least being contested at at all times, like some of their kind of like troller builds, but it's just not happening, right? Like they just aren't able to get draw off this point, particularly with Misha here, supporting that very, very nicely there, guys. Like that is not uh, good at all. And I think this should be a win there for 55. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other games. Uh, how about, let's check out uh, Shuriken. Let's check out the Num versus the Quaggas. Ooh, close game here. Zimvu though, maybe about to die here. Zimvu so, so low. Zimvu falls. Benny, where's Benny? Benny going to try and get that disengage, at least for the time being, but uh, looking good for Numb here, as expected. Corgan's really putting up a good fight, though. Fly grabs the decap, respawns are there. Holy Beerman is back in play here. Demolish looking for his next move, but this is looking very, very scary for the Corgan. Seven minutes left to go here. 300 points to 251 for the Corgan. How did the game timeline look at you? Yeah, pretty much just lots of kills happening for Numb and... Corgan's having a bit of a difficult time to actually win these fights. Benny going to have to go and grab the Lion back for the time being, but here comes the next team fight. Quaggas might try and split three here, but if they lose another player, that might essentially be the beginning of the end. And Dimash does die. Cranel going to try and stealth throw this, maybe. Uh, maybe a transfusion res here from Holy Beardman. Mesmer and Benny. Is it, they might be able to get that, actually. Is there going to be enough cleave here? Uh, there might be. Oh, here comes Gornet. They're cleaving out hard. Transfusion is nice, but no, I believe that actually is going to be a kill confirmed onto Dimash. Yeah, it absolutely is. And Corgans are going to have to reevaluate this fly. Immediately going for another decap yet again. Cranel going to be able to match it. Should be able to deny this at least for a short period of time. There we go. Fly going to instead go back into this fight there and look for additional kills there. Holy beer, man. Not looking super healthy, to be frank, right now. Gornet um, is going to get pressured a bit, forced out of Shroud. But with Fly now back in play, this Scourge is, uh, Scourge's time is limited here, I believe. He's got that gas, which will keep him alive at least for a little bit longer. But after that breach runs out, this is looking pretty damn scary here. At least for the time being. Zimvu very, very low, getting a bit of healing. But I think this is going to be an Ultram win here, guys. Ultranum should be able to get this job done fairly quickly. Oh, Fly dies. But, oh, no, 80 points is so hard. So hard to win with just 80 points on the enemy team. Now, I don't think it's quite going to happen uh, for the time being here. Oh, that should be favorable. They do get Fly, but... I think Numb will just bunker this down here. Like, Kawa Blanca and Gornet should be able to hold there. Adelante bringing in some fantastic support there. We see, of course, Sagebird just doing his thing, waiting for the game to end on Dragon. And yeah, that is going to be an Ultron win. Even though Adelante dies here, I don't think there's going to be enough time here. Fly could even go for a very cheeky decap here on the line, which would pretty much be the end of the game. Looks like they're just going to try and stall out mid until the game ends. But even if that doesn't happen, this is very, very hard to win right now for the Quaggans. Let's see how this game here with the Worms is going on down there as well. Yeah, Worms, they pretty much similar to the Ultron game. They are just doing well and they are winning. Uh, definitely some good effort here from the red team. They're putting in a good amount of work uh, here, but it does appear that the Lakers are going to be advancing on it to the semis there. Solid two cap, nothing happening there. This game is over. Cole dies there. Uh, Stern and Bells are also in trouble. Right, let's take a look at the prestige game.
Here we go. Prestige content. Ooh, actually, it's a pretty spicy one. Yeah, which you see Benzo dying here, like surrounded by bodies there of the Mirage as well, I believe, there, uh, from Ryan. They're all dead on the ground, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough here with uh, Nikki about to die over here as well, bleeding out. Cranops comes in on the Burst Core Guardian. Okay, top eight Core Guard, guys. Okay, look, you can play this build officially now, but I think it may just die to the Mirage here. Yep, and Payne gets that kill. This game is over. It's going to be exactly as I predicted, guys. I have made the right calls here. Prestige will win this game. 55. I mean, I, I want to go... Dude, what if this game's actually flipped? Dude, it has... Oh, man. Can, can you guys imagine if the scientists actually got the win here? Like, somehow? Like, they, they have, like, the absolute top secret builds, and they were able to win somehow into 55. Like, snipe 55 out of the tournament. But no, it has not happened, my friends. It has not happened. Why am I getting pinged? What is this? My phone is telling me something. Okay. What is that? We, uh, w w what is going on here, right? We have your package in queue. What is this? What have I ordered? How do you have my number? Is it trying to steal my identity? I'm not clicking on this. What the fuck? Fuck off. Holy shit. I'm being hacked, guys. I'm being scammed live on stream. But yeah, so it's going to be Lakers advancing onwards. Uh, with 55, so we're going to see 55 into Ultranum rematch in the next round, and then Prestige into the Lakers. I mean, I've got to say, guys, right? I wish I could watch all these games. All these games are ridiculous. They are insane. Like, both of these semis are going to be absolutely fantastic. They're going to be so enjoyable, so high energy, some crazy gaming in every single situation. So we definitely want to check that out there as well. Okay, but... For now, these games are essentially in their ending phase. Prestige going to be cleaning up their game, and 55 cleaning up this game here as well. Foreign Sinus in the downside should get cleaned down by Boyce and Zan, and Zed Sinus and Kid Scientist forced to get that disengage elsewhere to the other side. Meanwhile, Dra is doing his thing. Actually, is in a bit of trouble uh, in the 1v2 into the Drug Scientist and the Renegade. Might end up falling there. Is going to die, so the map may get neutralized here temporarily, but I don't think it's enough as Syndrona has simply grabbed the line, and that is going to be essentially the end of the game there with Misha doing the same thing to the Dragon. A three cap is now in play, and the game is just moments away from being finished. 55 advance. They, I mean, look, they, they, they're back, guys. 55 have returned, and they want to get the job done. They want to secure this victory. They want to get it done. They want to win hard, guys. They want to win big, and they want to secure this content. Okay. Initiate the games. Hey, Stun Gangs with the five gifted subs, man. I really appreciate that. I'll do an Ecto Gamble in your honor. Right, Ecto Gamble, here we go. And it's a win, dude. I love Stun King 44. I love him more than I love Surfshark VPN. The best, biggest value, biggest performance VPN for all of your internet security needs. Get 83% off right now, guys, using the code Mighty Teapot on Three Months Extra Free on getting your digital life secured with the power of the Apex Alpha Predator of the Sea. Act today, my friends. All right. Let's leap in there, guys. Here we go. Capricorn. Oh, I do love this map. Ah, oh, now this actually could be potentially interesting for the Num Boys. And this will allow them to team fight pretty damn hard. Now it is a big map, so 55 can maybe rotate, rotate around it and flex their big brains. But if uh, if Ultram win these battles, if they win these team fights, we saw them more than capable of doing actually uh, in the earlier match on Legacy. And this could certainly be a very, very spicy game indeed. This is certainly a map that very often revolves around this secondary objective. Being able to win that team fight quickly and efficiently is key to victory here. And well, Ultram, they are known for having a fantastic team fight. Some great synergy between all these players in that situation. Let's see if they can make it work here. Dra are going to be sent over there. They're going to do the same strategy. They're going to push Dra. Uh, directly over to their far node and let Zan go ahead and cap. Now, Zan playing very safe. I actually really like this from Zan. Wait, dude, seriously, is this actually like a meme? I, I, wait, no, not again. Surely Sin doesn't die again. <laughs> he actually died again. He lives, guys. It's a good sign. However, that does leave Dra a little bit outnumbered there into Cow Blanca Fly and into Sage Splitter. All right, there he is. Dra gets the kite, though, but 
does uh, give the note away. So both teams grabbing their sides. Looks like mid is going to be the additional push here from both teams. Let's see. 1v1 into the pro. That Zan watching for the decap there before pushing into the fight. Okay, here we go. So, Adelante already very pressured. He's going to have to pop Renewed. In fact, he has to now. Oh, that is the problem with this Guardian, right? He just really struggles to survive. Oh, beautiful Shadow Portal there from Fly. Getting Adelante out, but that does leave the mid fight without a support. But Adelante gets the out of combat and now pushes back in. However, he is a little low on corners out. Doesn't have much stability right now. And, of course... Has no renewed focus, so he's got to be very, very careful. Gornet putting in a lot of work right now, but the decap from Numb is good. Gornet now in a bit of trouble here. Needs some healing there. God needs some support there. Gets his heal, but yeah, beautiful heal there. And Cab Blanca. Look at that synergy. Gives him the dwarf buff so he doesn't die there. Gets healed by Adelante. Gets his own heal. So love that play there from the Numb boys, but it is not over. The onslaught from rank 55 is just endless. And Adelante's going to go down. The damage, the pain train. Zan, stop it. Can they res it? Stealth is big, actually. Oh, no, they can't, though. The cleave is so much. Boys, Zan, and Sin just going psycho on the, the bleeding corpse of Adelante. And Gorna gets caught in the crossfire as well into the downside. Misha, the master of disaster, stomps it out. All those neutral, though, as Fly was able to get a sneaky, sneaky, bizarre decap. But Dra faring very, very nicely in this 1v1, slaying very, very, uh, very effectively. Gets that decap, and of course... Boyce is going to help out here as well while the bread team is respawning. And that might even end up being a cap for uh, the blue team. I think 55, they've sharpened up that team fight, guys. They absolutely have. They have got stuff going right the hell now. And they uh, have shown themselves to not only be confident when it comes to roaming around the map, playing that three-node style, but they are monsters in those team fights, guys. They really, really are beasts when it comes to handling that 4v4 and 3v3 as well. And, and I've got to say, like, I think that Core Guardian may well have had its day, guys, right? Like, Core Guardian, it just, without Scourge, it is so much weaker. It's what we talked about. We were talking about the balance, right, guys? Like, when it comes to the balance, Core Guardian, it was only, it, one of the reasons why Core Guardian was so great is because it had this amazing synergy with the Scourge. With Scourge gone, it's just such an easy target, such a vulnerability in the team fight. And the Warrior there from Misha, just not really expressing that same weakness. Now, Zan did go down there, but was immediately battered up there by the Master of Disaster. Zan might fall again. He is super, super low right now. Can he hold on there? I think he can't. He does go down. He's resible, but actually, never mind that. Counselor, he is definitely not resible there. The DPS is going to be huge here. Boyce and Misha get caught, actually, with the sun. That's a big Jade wins. Misha now in trouble there. Could be a big kill. Have 55 push their luck. They may well have done, but look at this. Very smart play here by 55. They get the disengage immediately, right? They immediately leave. They lose Zan, and they back it up. Right, they're going to keep contesting it and keep trying to delay the rotation of Ultram, but they back it up. And Boyce even going to go for the contest. He can do this, actually, because bear in mind, it is a support and a DPS. So Boyce can actually hold this for a good amount of time. It's going to, of course, Adelante smartly rotates away. Probably going to look for the Bell fight here while Zan isn't available. If they can actually get ahead in this Bell fight, that is a really big comeback move here for Ultram. If they can pressure the Warrior enough uh, and make it so there's no corners left over, they should be able to win this fairly effectively. But... 55. They're just saying, no, we aren't going to team fight. We're going to play the map instead. Sage Butter gets the cap there as well, but Gornet ends up falling there. Sin comes in and actually fly in trouble here as well. Can Atlanta get that res? No, he absolutely cannot. And just better rotations here, right? Like, you know, um, uh, 55 not pushing the bell. Atlanta maybe overcommitted here for a little bit. He was here for too long, and that allowed the fight over here to collapse with Sin, um, Boyce, and Zan just getting those kills. And fly eliminated here as well. And this is looking pretty damn good to 55. They're probably going to go for the bell. Now just get this over. Get this node off the map. And get it back to three nodes where it belongs. And yep, there we go. And there it is. There's the bell. And yeah, I think the writing's on the wall for this one, guys. Ultranum. This is probably where the story ends in the month AT for Ultranum. At least for the time being. They're going to have to go for a reset and try again in the next match, I think. Or in the next month, the AT, in fact. Because 55, they are looking pretty goddamn unstoppable in this game. Another kill on Adelante lining up uh, any time uh, now, I believe, actually. No corners left over. He does have renewed focus. He's going to have to pop it very, very soon. There's no way he can't use it. In fact, he does get it. But he's on 340 health. I mean, he might just die immediately after that. Yeah, a bit of healing. But is it enough? Uh, does get a great, lovely stealth there from Fly. Great play here from Ultranum. But 55, they are hungry dragons, guys, okay? They are hungry dragons. I'm afraid, guys, this is looking like a fairy tale, right? We need to see a St. George, because right now, guys, Ultranum, they are the uh, 
That's the, you know, it's the, it's the youngest girl of marriageable age being fed into the dragon, okay? Just, just like the olden days, I'm afraid. Zan does die. Good kill there from Cow Blanca and Gornet, and maybe they can use that momentum to turn this around, but Misha even looking for the banner, I'm afraid here. Is it going to happen? Not looking likely, but there you go. No Dragon Slayer just yet for Numb. Uh, 55 looking pretty damn unstoppable currently. Dra is 1v1 into a prot hollow. Very exciting matchup. Sin decapping the bazaar over there. And yeah, this is pretty much looking like a finals position for rank 55. Let's check out the other semis though, guys. Because of course, both games are going on right now. And it, ooh, interesting. So we see some dead worms. Azaz and Goku, both dead. Aeon falling here on mid there. And... Uh, Esprit finishing the job there. Oh, is Azaz actually resible? It's, he's kind of like weirdly resible. No. With Rip coming in, that's going to be big. However, okay, fed from corruption is Frey on the Necromancer. But it looks like they're going to have to actually give up Bell here. Uh, as Prestige now have the two cap. Portal is going to maybe bring some additional players in there and help them rotate. But there they go. First, but rather, a second Bell goes to Prestige. First one went to uh, the Worms by the look of that. But still, bear in mind, guys, I believe this is actually the map where... Um, isn't this the map where they lost to Prestige in the tour match? I believe it was, as far as I'm aware. So, this is certainly a map where Prestige can definitely get the win there. However, the Worms are now back off respawn. Aeon is bleeding out there as well. She'll be back shortly. But there's the decap there onto the Bazaar. Mio going to be able to contest that for at least a little while there. But I think Esprit will be able to eventually force that node with the Prot Hollow. The Scourge won't be able to contend with the level of sustain that the Prot Hollow can bring to the table. Pain looking around for a kill, but is getting hunted down right now by Draza and Goku. Goku healing up the Thief quite nicely. And Draws are going to go ahead and push the Hollowsmith with the Necromancer. Have a pain. Hot on his tail here. Here he comes. Want to make sure that Benzo does not die anytime soon. Benzo on nades, not on prot. So there's a lot of damage here, actually. So I think um, I think Frey and Draws have to be very, very careful. You can see that. Yeah, you can see that burst on the Draws. It's spiking him super hard. The Lich is big, though. And Pain is going to get caught by the Lich. Oh, a stray auto attack. Just clips him. Draza is very, very low, but gets the immediate, uh, like, evasion heal there um, with Withdrawn. He's going to just barely hang on there. Like, Benzo pumping hard, but the pump is not quite enough. And Draza secures that very nice plus there. Good 2v2 there from the lake is generating that kill. Esprit going to find himself 1v2 into Aeon. But again, like, just the Mesmer won't really be able to kill Esprit, particularly when he's already kiting, right? He's already kiting ahead of time. Great awareness there from the Lakers, because they know that that Mirage is going to rip through pretty much everything. Rip through pretty much everything indeed. And there you go. There's the two cap. And when Benzo's still bleeding out, that bell is probably looking very, very tasty indeed for uh, the Lakers right now. 50-point bell would essentially be the nail in the coffin, uh, making sure they're going to be facing rank 55 Dragons in the grand finals of the Daily AT. Mio falls there, and that means that the bell is pretty much free. Like, both the kind of like major team fighters uh, for the red team are now completely dead for the time being. Aeon not looking too healthy either. She's getting battered by that prot hollow. She does have the node and will be able to hold it fairly effectively, I think, for the time being. But I think eventually that prot hollow, that DPS is simply going to be a little bit too much. Now, Bell is kind of free here. Goku, uncontested, is going to get that. I don't think anyone from red team can make it here in time. And uh, that's going to be game, guys. 450 with that bell from Goku. Removing a node on that, because bear in mind, guys, the more nodes, the better for the red team. Rip in the downs eight here on middle there. Benzo looking to kite away there, but yeah, 1v2 there. The Necromancer and Az is looking to find that kill. Goku supports it. Stands on that point. Draza are going for that push. Going on to Aeon big time. Aeon about to die here as well. Playing the experimental build, by the way, guys. Check this out. She's playing this crazy uh, sage build when we're in the trapper. Like, big damage there. Great sword axe torch. Bet you guys didn't see that one coming. A right, pretty spicy build there with wilderness survival there with a lot of damage there with taste of danger, amid dexterity, and poison master. Some extreme DPS there spamming out that quick draw bonfire and all that kind of good stuff with the flame trap and spike trap. Some big DPS, but it's not going to be enough there. The worms are going to finish it nearly on a three cap. Pain will be able to contest this node uh, as the game comes to a conclusion on the bazaar. Goku can't obviously cap that, but. Mio dies here on middle, and that is going to be the end there, guys. Rank 55 have probably won their game by now, and there it is. That's the last game available, and the grand finals of the Monthly AT will be Rank 55 Dragons versus the Lakers Worm. Versus the Laker Worms. Oh, it could be Temple. What map? Oh, my God, dude. The map is going to get crazy here. Oh, goodness me. Goodness, goodness me. What have we got here? Oh, my goodness.
There it is. Let's get into the AT, guys, here. Grand finals. Let's go. Here we are. Here we go, guys. Temple of the Science Storm. And on the red team, it's going to be... It's a spree on the Brot Hollow. Frey on the Scourge with the Fleshworm. Going for a more kiting setup or into here. Azaz on the Renegade. Draza on the DP Thief. Goku getting blown up right now. There's the kill. Can they res that, though? Oh, that Jade wins from Azaz. The Renegade himself. Allowing that res. Denying the cleave there. You love to see that there from the Worm. Goku getting pressured once again. It's going to go down. Zan does not follow there as well. As is very low. They're going to have to disengage it even after a great downside play, though. Frey cannot revive that. And As is now in trouble. Esprit going to rotate in there and maybe try and hold this down for a little while longer. But Frey is going to go down there as well. No revive potential there. And 55 collapse and find that kill. As is and Draza rotating. And actually, Sin dies. Is that. Wait. Oh my god. Oh. The, whoa. That was ridiculously close. They actually nearly basically won the game off that. If they managed to cleave out, if they managed to cleave out uh, uh, Sin before before Frey died there, that would have been insane. But instead, they're going to basically lose everyone. Ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ooh. Azaz dies, Esprit dies. Draws are able to get the disengage, and we'll probably try and contest here, I imagine, at least for the time being, to delay 55 and move it away from that. Goku has now respawned. Don't think you can get anywhere to get any revives, and no, he can't. And then Draza is now probably going to try and match Sin because Sin. Is now going for that DK there onto the altar. And it looks like oh, we're gonna see the uh, we're gonna see the Lakers just push this fight directly again. Let's see if they can make it work. Of course, things can get very, very funky when the buffs are gonna come up in about 30 seconds time. That's where some real weird stuff is gonna start happening. There we go, the buffs are now up. There we go. As is gonna ignore it though, and so they're gonna go and push there and leave uh, it's gonna be uh, a spree handling that buff while uh, as is reclaims the altar for his team. He's actually not going to go for it. Instead, he's going to... Actually, he's going to go for it. Yeah, he's going to go for it, actually. Instead, then, meanwhile, we have a spree. He's going to troll this 1v1 into the prot hollow. Meanwhile, we have the fight going down over here. Pretty stable fight here, to be honest. Like, there's not a crazy amount of kill potential here. Not at least... Not yet, at least. Now we have the thief, so now things can really start getting a little bit spicier. Draza is going to be able to match that, but the Scourge and the Guardian from Goku and Frey should be able to keep this fairly stable right now, at least for the time being. So, let's see how this one goes. Good line there by Goku. Should keep him safe a little bit there. Gets the uh, restain, but actually, he is just getting pressure. Honestly, here you see that fragility, right? The fragility of that core garden. He just runs out of stuff, and he just dies. Now, 55 perhaps zerged a little bit too hard there, as it is going to be now a two-cap, I believe, in favor of the uh, the Lakers here. Esprit goes ahead and grabs himself the middle node there. There it is. The gateway has been captured, but 55 did get themselves a pretty nice points lead there. Frey is holding firm there, denying that buff there uh, the entire time. But there it is. The temple captured by Zan. Zan about to look to push out the map. Draws are going to try and delay him a little bit, perhaps. Uh, now, of course, we do need to see a spree match draw. Yeah, very nice rotation there. I'm really loving these rotations here from the Worms. They get draw in there immediately. Uh, sorry, yeah, they get um, they get a spree in there to match draw. So Azus can then rotate and roam and get some kills. He's going to be on Sin. Sin is going to have to leave this, and that should again be a slight map edge here for the red team. Now, a spree. Oh, actually, if Goku gets that buff, that's massive. Looks like he does. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the Worms were actually were able to. The Lakers were able to actually drive 55 down. Hill uh, away from the buff. Now they might. Oh, if Azaz dies here, this isn't good. However, if Azaz survives, it is good. Ah, he doesn't. Now, is there a steal available? There may not be a steal. There isn't a steal, so no interrupt available there on the Signet. So Azaz gets back on his feet. He's very low on defensive though right now. Like he is not looking too hot when it comes to defensive capability. Good kite here. Good peeling. Great healing there from Goku. And Worms do find themselves an actual edge in this game. Frey forces the node there over Zan as well. Wow, this is great. And Dra is now getting outnumbered here. Draza comes. And looks for the kill. Actually, a beautiful ball there by Esprit. That might be a kill to draw. It is a kill to draw. Oh, lovely synergy there. The Worms, Draza, and Esprit working in perfect unison there. And a top buff there with a two cap, guys. That's scary. That is very, very, very scary indeed. Uh, for rank 55. 250 points now. It's getting kind of to want the mid game right now. Buffs will be up. Both buffs coming up in 20 seconds. This is where things can get very weird. Let me put it like that, guys. Some very, very unusual things can happen. With both those buffs up, let's see how these teams are going to be able to handle this. And I think, you know, guys, I think a lot of people say 55 love this map. But I'd actually argue this is even maybe even a worm favored map in this situation. Because I think the worms have shown throughout this entire tournament that they have got the best rotation. They are moving around the map just better. Even 55 guys in the Swiss. Yeah, they lost to 55. But 
they lost in spite of losing the fights. Not because of it, guys, right? A lot of them think, oh yeah, Worms, they just team fight, right? No, 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 no. One of the reasons Worms win fights is because they rotate so well. And we just see them rotating a little bit better in this in this, uh, in this this game. I would even say that they, they are not really, they're having a bit of a tough time in fights, right? Like, you know, Goku getting smashed pretty hard uh, a lot of the time. Um, but that is just not, uh, you know, they're still winning despite that. And now Zan, oh, he's outnumbered here again by Draza. And if, if Zan dies here, that would be devastating. And look, Misha gonna go for the, oh, is oh, Worms gonna deny that? Yes, they are. They are able to deny that quite effectively. Their fray lurking on there, but does actually give up the cap for that. He was guarding that, but Sind is gonna be able to grab that quite effectively. Mimo on bottom, but it's gonna be Boyce into Azus. This is probably not gonna end. I think these guys are not gonna be able to kill each other super effectively, but that is okay here for the Worms. If boys can win this, obviously that's amazing, and same for Azers. But both players, very skilled duelists uh, in uh, any matchup here. And that means that uh, it will be very difficult for either of them to actually secure a kill onto the other. Over here, we actually have, oh, that Scourge putting in work, to be honest, guys. And Zan about to die, taking a bit of a rough fight there. Basically, 1v3. I don't think there's going to be any revival to here. No, Masters, he can't find it, guys. He can't find the res. He simply cannot do that. Onto Zan, and Zan gonna bleed out. Oh, that bleed is painful when you're 100 points down. That really hurts, guys. Boyce still in this 1v1 here as well. Looks like Sin gonna try and mix it up a little bit and get the out number. But Goku, look at this rotation. This is what I'm talking about, I guess, here from Goku. The Worms, they are exactly where they need to be. A beautiful movement here, denying any value from that plus. And the two cap stays locked in right now for the Worms of Spree. Watching over the altar. Frey just positioned a little bit, ready to deny any kind of decap there onto the table. Yeah, look at this. I'm loving this map play here from the Worms. So good. Draft force to save mid because of the threat of the decap here as well as is once again that target getting exploded by uh by boyce but goku resustains it and now we can start to see goku leave yeah goku's gonna go ahead and leave that right now his people need him elsewhere he's gonna get delayed by draw a little bit this is a potential opening right now for rank 55 to find a kill elsewhere but i'm not sure it's gonna happen here guys i'm not sure if they're actually gonna get that it's gonna be very very difficult to break through sind and zan gonna try and break the scourge but can they break the scourge i'm not sure they can draza arrives here as well in time he gets blown up by nazi he, 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 he like shouted he stole into like a massive nade barrage there so gets shoved away but goku is here for that reason i doubt draza does no, he is going to be fine. And uh, this is actually getting to the beginning of the end, guys. It's 4.30, right, uh, to 2.83. I think they've done it. I think they've broken the curse, guys. I don't believe this. I honestly can't believe this, guys. The Worms, they're going to break the 55 curse. Draza gets a decap there. A spree 1v1 into Dra. They're finally going to stop having nightmares about Zan late at night, guys. The French Worms, the Lakers, they reach their final form. Exclamation mark Worms in the chat. I think they're going to do it. They lost to 55 three times in a row even more than that every single time they've been broken by 55 the final boss of guild wars 2 pvp it's finally over guys the lakers are gonna claim their victory they will claim their victory over rank 55 for the first time in any pvp event they end it on a three cap losing in swiss nearly losing to ultra having a tough time versus prestige but they pull it together for the finals get some french flags in the chat because the frenchmen have finally done it they break rank 55 they win monthly at wow there it is. 55. They thought they would win. They came back. They thought they'd be able to get the job done on a map that I think a lot of people view 55 as being heavily favored on. But the Worms, they get out there on the map, guys. They're everywhere. They rotate and they get the job done and they win it in a pretty good victory there from the Worms. Extremely well played there. Esprit breaking the curse. Gets his revenge. Very, very nice there, guys.